it's on. Let's see. What is the sound like? Oh, I'm going to have to tell this. I can hear you. Yeah, okay. I have to mute it myself. Yeah, let's see. Because I can't mute it. Because it's a slight lag. Okay. It does. Yeah, that the like the echo is so trippy. And it's like, oh, did you say that just now? Or. Oh, God, is that my voice? Oh, no. I sound like a douchebag. I hate hearing my voice recorded. It's the worst. Oh, it's fine. Let's see. Enable recordings. Yes, so we are recording and if by some reason this doesn't record properly etc etc i will write everything up in detail and post it so Oof. you're gonna do a transcript i mean this can go for hours not a literal transcript but like expand the outline with proper fleshed out sentences etc etc that kind of thing okay. yeah well, uh, I'm not. I'm you know, not answering nothing. all seventy-something questions again. Absolutely not. You guys are on your own. But <laughs> let's see. Settings. Okay. Let's start putting some links out. See what happens. I got barely any sleep last night. Very. I I was too wired. I was like, oh my god, we're doing the thing tomorrow, and then I didn't sleep. It's just a question of river, and not this offers any closure, I suppose. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I think this is just gonna make me want to work on it more. <laughs> That is most likely. Yeah. You know, it's possible to like uh, put out smaller bits in written form, like yeah, we could do there. we could do like a couple pages at a time of like written prose. Oh, we've got fourteen viewers already. Hello. Yeah, I. I don't know if but, it's people who are actually here or people who've just left, have never left this tab. <laughs> Either way. Uh, no, they were, it was a zero moment. Oh, ago, so I'm then there's sure people. There's, uh, oh my god, people. Okay, let's see. Uh, post on Tumblr. Bear with us as we. Uh... Yeah, we're just setting up. Yeah, we're just setting up. We'll we'll start in a bit. But uh, welcome to those of you here. Oh, hello, uh, Dale the Twin Dragon has just said on my chat that he's in stream. Hello there. Hello, Cliff. Okay, now I'm getting stuff. Yep, we're getting people. Yep, there they are. Couple of minutes, give yeah. people a chance to chance to turn up, and while we troubleshoot, I think we've got everything set up good. Uh, the sounds working, so that was yep. the big hurdle. Mm hmm. Well, as long as most people could hear us, because that's the yep. main thing. Let's see. Okay, got that. Got the DTA. Oh, I should probably do that on my end too. Okay. One more. Oh, we're up to thirty six. That's good. Oh, God, public speaking. <laughs> Don't look at the number. 
They're not real. You can't see them. Well, you heard that, people. According to Evan, you're not real. Yep. You're just... <laughs> That's the <laughs> only way we can do this, okay? You're <laughs> just figments of our imagination. <laughs> only hedgehogs are real. <laughs> Okay, uh, that's, did I do Tumblr? Yes, I did Tumblr, I did Twitter, <laughs> oh, yeah, I did that, yeah, that, 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 that worked, Chrissy. If you're not people, you're all a bunch of chow. <laughs> We're sitting in a chow garden. So Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can work with that. Okay. Anyway, we can get the Chow Garden music playing in the background. Uh, I don't want to put copyright music on. Um, oh, fair enough, fair enough. Just because I don't know how YouTube works anymore and I'm scared. Um, oh, yes. I could put some like ambient uh, like sound on, like rain or something like that. Oh, forget it. It's not that yeah. important. Yeah. I can play the music in my head. Yes. <laughs> okay then. We get content struck for you singing it. Okay. Um. Yeah, we're gonna wait a little bit longer and let more people come on. We'll probably start at like ten after. Um. Let's see. We can start on questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can start on uh, some of the questions, I suppose. So, like, yeah. uh, actually, like, give it two more minutes because it's like two more minutes at least on my. Yeah, clock, we can like... actually start at ten proper. Yeah, ten, ten proper. Uh, are we streaming? I don't think we are. Uh, I think we're gonna post it there. Yeah, on YouTube, I mean. Yeah, um, I'm not smart enough to do that, so we're just here. I like Picard because it's very simple. We're not doing. We're not uh, going on tw uh, Twitter though. <laughs> I don't no, think just, they I, can stream on Twitter anymore. Didn't or they? Even post, or uh, even post it on Twitter. You'll notice I refuse to call it X. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have a YouTube in the way that everybody has a YouTube. I don't use it. <laughs> um, I just I've... watch videos on it and make playlists. <laughs> Pretty much the same. Yeah. I just use it to keep track of videos I want to want to watch like oversimplified just had a new video up mm. yeah i love their stuff let's see chrome window it worked hooray and okay uh shh, no bookmark bar for y'all um yeah. Boar. okay these are the questions we've uh we, we've we've asked questions. Um, let me get this down. I don't need it right now. Oh, it's uh, six on the dot. So yep, let's go. Um, welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome to the Ghosts of the Future finale story discussion explanation exploration stream we're we're yeah. here we're talking yeah. there's ghosts and, uh, <laughs> uh, first off i'd like to say to everyone we're sorry we're so sorry <sighs> i wish that i was still in college and I had free time to do whatever the hell i want damn you real world <laughs> i have to pay my rent Okay, so um, we've got a bunch of questions. I'm not really sure where to start. What are people interested in? I have questions about the characters. I have questions about kind of just the general creative process. I have world building questions. I have um, questions about scrap storylines. I think we should do the, the what ifs afterward. But um, we can talk about creative process or um, 
like the world building or just character trivia stuff. Or we can do, we have a couple things for like just plot explanation things, if anybody's well, if, unclear. Yeah, we'll be doing a read up of where we were going later. So any questions will be answered by what happens next will be answered then. So we're just going to do the clarification programs, programs, uh, questions first. Mm. So let's see, clarification. Uh, hmm. Okay, what what era of clarification is everyone looking for? Ooh, 88 people. Uh, are all you guys looking for first? Uh, we'll look okay with anything. Your chat is moving faster than mine. How dare they? Um, oh, hello, Kyle. Let's just talk about silver. Oh! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, how, uh, how wonderfully vague. Let's Let's talk about silver then. Let's see. First and, for first and foremost, he is not a top dominant personality. Oh, okay. No, look, people don't know about that. <laughs> I know, I know. This is a little bit of a private thing. Ay, um, uh, we'll give you an. If you, everyone asks, we'll give you a clarification another time. <laughs> yeah. Um, God, I am not a radio person. Um, what? I didn't actually get a lot of questions about silver. That's the thing. Um. I think the only question I got was basically, is he going to get his powers back? And the answer is yes, we will be getting to that. It would um, be a bit silly if he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the biggest question was, um, the, the, of like clarification stuff was what happened in, I think, issue nine. Um, let's pull that up, actually. Let's see. Bookmarks, bookmarks, bookmarks. Oh, De Evan definitely uses real life cities uh, and locations in for inspiration for her stories. That's, yes. that's definitely a thing. Ghost of Future is set in San Francisco. Oh, of course, a fictionalized version of San Francisco, but it is the city itself. Let's see. Is it? Yeah, there we go. Um, so the biggest question was like, what happens here where like Sonic gets taken apart and put into a chaos drive and put into metal sonic um and, and then we suddenly have another sonic running around yes and then yeah, we that... cut to issue uh let me go back no too far um cut to issue 10 where he is suddenly like oh you can't see him but he's he, he's here <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, he just uh, Sonic shows up. Sonic yeah, he shows up. Uh, back up. So we've got what, so Sonic A and Sonic B. Yeah. So how would I best explain this? Let's uh, switch to the Photoshop tab. Yeah, um, this is a this is a this has to do with the law behind of how ghosts uh, work. Yeah. Yeah, in regards to that, th these creatures are. Uh, I, do I want to use the term creatures? Entities are made out of. Chaos energy, essentially. Yeah. So we got, you know, emeralds. One, two, three. What, what, what am I doing? Um, four, five, six, seven emeralds. And Sonic's data, basically, like, everything that makes Sonic Sonic, his quote-unquote soul, um, is in the emeralds. Like, it, it is hard coded into the like patterns of chaos energy um so it's kind of like the chaos emeralds are like a backup external, in the cloud like, um, like an external hard drive or something yes and then a iteration of sonic can be projected from the emeralds there he is look at him go um and uh it's fully functional fully sentient it works perfectly for him, but um, that version, that iteration could get killed or could get copied and put somewhere else, like into Metal Sonic. So, um, and then that ver iteration is contained in Metal Sonic. So that left none sticking around. So when Silver um, went and accessed the emeralds, he basically 
summoned a new iteration of Sonic to spawn new Sonic. And kind of like a backup, it's like the new one didn't have the last few uh, moments of memory that the one that is in metal had. Um, but that is the only difference between them. They are equally valid within yep, the, yep. the narrative's uh, perspective. They're both Sonic at the same time. Yeah. And this so could theoretically the term... happen hmm. over and over and over again. And so you could have infinite Sonics. Yes. Eggman's worst nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how that worked. Um, so there are currently two Sonics. There is one uh, inside Metal Sonic, which is why he's turned into Shard and his personality has changed so uh, extremely. Um, and then there is the second iteration. And then there is always the backup in the Chaos Energy Cloud. Um, I mean, they're both Sonic at the same time, so yes. this isn't so much a clone thing. This isn't a clone. Yeah, it's just that Sonic doesn't work being being this chaos spirit entity. He doesn't work like a normal corporeal person, you know. Hello, hello, Steph Cube. Thank you. We're doing fine. Yeah. Uh, does it? Uh, does he have all of Sonic's memories? Yes, just up yes. until the moment before he was put into Metal Sonic. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, kind of like a, a automatic backup. He just because it, it it's like refreshing every few minutes, and that last refresh didn't make it to the cloud in time. And just to make a sort of nerdy analogy, if any of you guys have seen like the late uh, latest special of Doctor Who with that whole bi generation thing, where both there are two doctors at the same time, but yeah, and they're, they're both, both the doctor. Yeah, they're both fully the doctor. Yeah, these are both fully the Sonic. Oh, I'm um, glad you saw that. Otherwise, that would have made no <laughs> sense to you. It was good. I have mixed feelings, but it was still pretty good. It's a good analogy. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's look at the next question. Sonic is Doctor Who. Moving on. <laughs> so that kind of covers this stuff, and that was asked by um, Nora Summers, Zamello, Aurora Lar, and F. 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 Foreman. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna Thank you for the highlight those so I can not look at them anymore. Let's see. We had uh, one question here is from Good Monkip is what uh, involvement did Nicole have with Gun's attack on the Ark, um, which is something that Ooh. won't really be covered in the outline. Though if we ever do like an expanded version, it will. That would be something we'd probably touch on. Um, her involvement was basically she opened the doors for them um she was on the ark she was a powerful computer entity being used on the ark and she agreed to let gun run run rampant basically without um getting i'll get into a little bit more detail about that later i think um with like why she was on the ark and who she was connected to and in that same vein, um, Extra's Art asked um, that uh, Yes, I... Origin of Frost, this is getting recorded. This is being archived, so mm -hmm. you, know, you can go yeah. back and reference this. Yeah, I will be um, hopefully uh, re uploading this to YouTube later so that it will be easily accessible and I'll post links and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Extra's Art asked um, about, I hinted, on Tumblr, that Shadow has a sister. Um, that is Nicole. Nicole is the sister I was mentioning. She kind of she talks about how they're both Robotniks at one point. Um, yeah. Uh, do, 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 family is weird. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a strange family. Um, so that's the main. That was the only like that whole like backup to the chaos cloud thing is really the only thing that I think was absolutely necessary for us to go over before we go into the plot so do we want to do that um i suppose we can do that as oh uh there's like how did rouge and omega end up on mobius oh uh great question science um, <laughs> just, just science. <laughs> um yeah we're looking at the next section of questions let me switch over tabs in hide Photoshop. There. 
I can see what I'm seeing. Um, how did Rouge and Omega end up on Morbius? Also asked by Aurora Law. Um, the New Chaotix would have been at the height of their uh, power, a pretty uh, extensive uh, kind of super science spy network um, who would have had researchers doing R&D into whatever Rouge wanted, basically. So they would have had access to uh, exploring multidimensional travel. Um, because, as you do. yeah, as you do. It's it's Sonic. That's not that weird of a thing to be able to figure out how to do. Um, yeah. It just, I just didn't explain it because it's like <sighs> time. <laughs> There's so much to cover sometimes that it's like they're they just got here. And they met a grisly fate. Yeah. Yes, and as uh, following up on the next question by Bravo Bravo Alpha, um they were on Mobius with an E looking for uh the Chaos Emeralds. Because it's kind of like they wanted to help Sonic and Shadow when they did meet up. Because they were planning to do that pretty soon. Let's see. This one, I think we're going to wait on that. Because that's kind of answered by the plot. Um, this is the same question. Um, sorry, I tried to sort these, but there was a whole lot. You guys yeah. were curious. Yeah. I mean, that's a good thing. That was the point. Oh, yes. E Eprower, we are doing a few questions so that people have time to start up and get in um, so they don't miss much. But uh, I think we're about ready to start. Uh, e yeah, we're going to be doing yeah. a few questions These are uh, later on. Yeah, we're, uh, yep, we've yep. got other questions that are better to... I think basically everything else um, will work fine afterward. Uh, should we do like a quick sum up of where we were before we jump into the plot? Yeah, sure. Um, let me go back on DA and let's pull up the latest issue. Yeah, just, just to get everyone uh, on board of where we were before, you know stuff happened yeah the last time on ghosts of the future um everything was fine nothing bad was happening don't worry about it it's, um, it's fine it's fine so anyway ghost of future issue 18 um let's see can y'all see yes okay um ghost of future issue 18 uh we are Please work next page links. I love you. What? No. Oh, no. What's wrong with you? Hold uh, on. Well, you, you've got a lot of tabs open. Maybe that's the only <sighs> I don't, though. It's not that many tabs. Um, No problem. I'll just pull them up on my desktop. So we'll be going to the full desktop view. Uh, boop. There. Don't look into infinity. Um, I have gazed into the abyss. <laughs> okay. So, back to Ghost of the Future, <laughs> issue 18. Um, okay, so we have Sonic is deep in uh, STC, Sonic the Comic, Sonic's... Uh, subconscious here um because they accidentally got uh he accidentally got shoved into stc's body um, yeah stc sonic is not quite he has an outward facade of being all right but inside he's not he's a little he's, bit he's, broken. he's not doing so hot he's, he's... You no know, <laughs> his mindscape is basically like a grayed out dystopian version of emerald hill because yeah. he's he's not quite right in the head yeah. Uh, if you, if any of you have read my comic where Supersonic is wandering this like broken hellscape of Emerald Hill while inside Sonic's mind, that's basically where Ghost of the Sonic, uh, Ghost of the Future Sonic is at that moment. Yes. Yes. And in that uh, Netherworld, he encounters somebody 
who could it be? We don't know. But Sonic, trying to be friendly, uh, tries to get him out uh, by showing him some tricks uh, with his chaos energy. It was a bad idea. Um, and mm. he gets blasted. Basically, this is not super clear at this point, but he's getting blasted to like a higher level of SDC's consciousness out of this subconscious. Um, he was talking to someone to whom it's not a good idea to have uh, chaos energy around at all, and I'm pretty sure you guys can put two and two together on who that is. Yeah. But anyway, back in the real world... Um... Silver still has his powers, but he's been seriously nerfed, which is not great because he was already nerfed. Um, uh, We've done a lot of nerfing of that. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, um, Venny is spying on their parents as they talk to Shadow about what they should do about the kids because the kids have been going off in adventures and doing things that are kind of extremely dangerous and they probably shouldn't be doing um uh, oh no yeah but uh shadow interrupts the conversation because he can sense that sonic is awake as in stc sonic and stc sonic is awake and crabby and doesn't know why he's here but he's got he's still got a hitchhiker um, and he is exploring the underground beneath, uh, the new Chaotix's mansion, which is, uh, Aquatic Mine. Yes. Um, and even further into Aquatic Mine, he finds, uh, the Badnik Horde storage that they have. Let's see. And uh, yeah, this is... This is this is my uh, Sonic E power, not um, STCO, which... Yes. Uh, yeah, this is just between the two of us. I don't have the rights to bring over STCO yeah. Super Sonic. That's, Sonics. that's a different it. project, oh, no. different team. Um, they're doing their own thing. Just the same origin point of Sonic the comic and then reinterpreting it in the modern uh, context. But yeah. Um, Shadow accidentally comes off as overly aggressive which is not helped by sonic um and of course they start fighting fight 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 um until they accidentally run into sicily's workshop where she is putting the finishing touches on shard and shadow and uh basically commands her to get him started uh is that it that's it for color um we gotta switch let's see Is this the next one? Yeah, I guess it is. Um, and yeah, we meet Shard, who has been a uh, Sicily project for quite a while. And as was implied in issue 16, um, Shadow has been hanging out more with uh, Sicily and Shard. And probably has been helping with this whole thing. Uh, yeah, and then that happens. Uh, Shard is very good at stopping Sonic. Shadow talks him down a bit, um, but uh, the because they were spying, uh, Venny and Silver and Blaze figured out what was going on and followed them down here. Then uh, Robotnik makes his entrance over San Francisco Bay, and that is the end of drawn things, basically, I believe. I yep. have one more. <laughs> that hasn't been posted um which is just the start of the the devastation and uh the message that robotnik will be broadcasting to the world ah oh, i forget precisely how that was going to go so let's uh yes let's switch over uh, let's see keep in mind this is stc robotnik not eggman as you would know him Thank you, DeviantArt. I love you. Um, Basically the guy who memes eating a giant cake. No, no, we are not doing that. 
<laughs> we could do that. <laughs> no, no, we are not. We are definitely not doing that. <laughs> He's here to announce his retirement. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, basically where the script left off. This is a rough script. The dialogue, you see it's in brackets. This is scratch dialogue, so it's more about the intention of the line and not polish. So as you're looking at this, be aware it's very rough. Um, be kind to me. So uh, let's see. I'm going to just kind of paraphrase, I think. Um, so Robotnik uh, has started his invasion. There's the sudden appearance of this massive uh, floating battle station above San Francisco Bay is causing uh, sudden tidal waves and like storm effects and it's just a bad scene um and robotnik broadcasts a message to basically every electronic device in the area um and it's like he announces this is dr robotnik he's looking for a sonic i know you're here i know you have the emeralds and if you want this world to remain in one piece, you will bring them to me. And for every hour you do not comply, I will raise a block of this beautiful city. Every hour on the hour. He's not a very nice person. Um, and so, uh, of course, uh, the kids get it. Silver's got a phone. Probably others do too. So they're watching this message as well. They know what's going down. Um, SDC sees it. Um, but, uh, nobody's quite got the gumption to go straight into it, except for STC Sonic, who steals Silver's phone and uses, the <laughs> and just runs off with it. He's going to use the map. Um, yep, he's out of here. Um, and then we cut to Nicole, who got this message as well. Um, and of course, her lair is somewhere below San Francisco. And sh this was definitely not part of her plans. Um, so she tries to make, she makes contact with Robotnik, calls him up. And she's like, hi, um, you don't really seem to understand what you're doing here. And he's like, I understand exactly what I'm doing. Um, and hangs up on her, <laughs> basically. Um, Let's see. So Nicole has failed to make any sort of uh, proper alliance with Robotnik or any sort of uh, compromise. So she's yeah, going to have to defend she herself. Had, she had control and an understanding with her Robotnik, the Eggman. But this guy is like, pff, no. Yeah, this, this guy is not so easily manipulated. Let's see. Okay, we're back with Sonic, uh, SDC Sonic, as he comes into San Francisco. Um, and he's keeping an eye on uh, Robotnik's Egg Fortress, and he's got to figure out what to go, what to do. But um, the battle between um, uh, Robotnik's Badniks and uh, Gun is already about to start. As you can see, um, the badniks are flooding into the streets, and gun uh, soldiers and helicopters are running to meet them, and it, this place is about to turn into a war zone, and Sonic's in the middle of it. Let's see. Yeah, he gets out of the way, um, and the problem is that Sonic could usually handle something like this, but not when uh, the consciousness of another version of himself is starting to uh, make itself known <laughs> in his head. Um, so he's having uh, auditory, auditory and visual hallucinations of uh, Ghost of Future Sonic. Um, and both of them basically trying to use the same body to fight and survive at the same time, which is not going to go super great for them. As you can see... Ghost of Future Sonic's powers are starting to bleed through and uh, uh, as they're fighting. Let's see. So as Sonic is as SDC Sonic is losing control of his body, he uh, 
stumbles into an alley to get out of the way, um, falls down and sees uh, his own reflection in a puddle on the ground. But it's not him. It's the ghost. And that is the end of issue 18. And that is the end of <laughs> scripting of any sort. <laughs> Yeah, now we, we are we into. Did want to do this. We did want to do that issue. We really yeah, did. we do. I like maybe maybe we'll maybe someday we'll have time to just do like a pencils version, and then switch to uh, like full prose for the rest of it. But yeah, um, now we're going into the outlines, which uh, starts with nineteen. Um, <sighs> okay. Um, Ghost of, Ghost of Future Sonic and SEC Sonic have met. They are still sharing one body, but they can communicate, and they are both fully awake. Um, STC is in charge, but um, Ghost of Future Sonic can kind of like exert a little bit of uh, his will and like momentarily take over, kind of thing. But uh, that wouldn't be so bad if they were suddenly jumped by. Ticolix, which we don't have a picture of, but is a Metal Sonic version of Tikal. Oh, yeah. The, the concept for this <laughs> was that um, Tikal got left behind, trapped inside the rock, and Doctor Zachary would put her in a chaos drive and then insert her into the mer like the Metal Sonic Metallics that was with yes. them. That's uh. Hold on, I'm gonna open up. Uh, let's go back and show that bit. Um, just a little wind back. That's 17. And through science, like the Metal Sonic's body would morph to a metal version of Dekal, basically. Yeah. So it's easier just to say Metal Dekal because no yeah. one really gets the X part of that. I think it looks cool. Um, anyway, yeah, this was the point where... Um, uh, Tikal accidentally got sucked into the ROCC, which, um, if you're not an STC person, is a device that is designed to contain the Chaos Emeralds and Chaos Energy in general. Mm -hmm. Yep, there she goes. It was a creation of King Tabor, hence why Robotnik has kidnapped the King Tabor computer from the STC universe. He's forcing him to make a. Uh, to rebuild it for him. Yes. Yeah, so Tikal has been in here since uh, issue 17. And I think one thing that's missing from our outline is we would need to have a scene that's cut back to um, Zachary and him conversing with Tikal and hatching this plan of his. Yeah, I don't know how that got lost in the shuffle, but that is definitely a beat of the story. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh... Let me switch my tabs. Chrome. Boop. Boop. Okay. Okay. So, um, let's just call her Metal T Call. It's easier to say. Um, it is. Metal T Call attacks uh, Sonic. Um, but we're going to cut back home. Uh, the parents are arguing with the kids about what they should do. Um, it's also very awkward that Shard is here. It's like. Sicily, we told you not to make a giant metal boyfriend, and here you've gone and made a giant metal boyfriend. Why did you do this? Um, uh, and they also, again, the parents were, especially um, mom, was very concerned about her kids going off and doing dangerous things, especially Silver, who's seriously injured and underpowered right now, but he is tired of being told what he can't do and being and thinking of himself as useless so he is dead set on going um and uh silver i mean not silver shadow is gonna stick up for the kids and uh kind of lead the charge on them going to the city um meanwhile back in the city um robotnik is just wrecking uh, Nicole's gun forces. Uh, he's having a great time. And while he's busy, um, Zachary is working behind the scenes to enact his plan, which is uh, to betray Robotnik and take over the Egg Fortress. Yeah, he's planning on... <laughs> In a shocking <laughs> twist, Zachary intends to betray someone. <laughs> the bad guys pl are back planning to backstab each other. Oh no. Oh, no. Who could have predicted that? <laughs> 
Okay, and in the city, um, Tikalik, um, Me- Metal Tikal has Sonic on the ropes, um, which is probably largely because of uh, uh, Ghost of Future Sonic is very freaked out by this and probably doesn't want to hurt her, not knowing what's going on. Um, and at, as uh, Ghost of Future Sonic gets more upset, he's probably taking over more control. Um, and then I think our... But of course, STC yeah. Robotnik is uh, sorry. STC Sonic is telling Ghost of the Future Sonic, like, no, no, you can't afford to get agitated while inside my body. Yes, that is very important. I swear yeah, you can't lose. Maybe... You cannot lose your cool inside my body. It does things. Hold on, I was reading the wrong version of the outline. Let's skip to this one because this is where the story diverges a little bit. <laughs> um, um, let's see. Where were we? Okay, so um, uh, Zachary's, but, um, uh, Zachary's height. I don't know. It's like that same size of knuckles, I guess. Yeah, probably maybe a little taller, but <sighs> let's see. Okay, so um, back where we were, Sonic. The Sonics are in trouble, but uh, right as um, Metal T Call is about to uh, make the killing blow, Shard appears, and uh, Shard. Uh, came with the kids and shadow um but and they were tracking uh silver's phone signal because stc sonic stole it um and so when they see that he's fighting down there but there's this whole battle going on at the egg fortress they split up and shard goes to help sonic um and Shard has much, much fewer reservations about fighting uh, Metal Call, and he uh, takes her out and, uh, okay, we had it here that she poofs into a piece of the Master Emerald, which I guess that works. Um, yeah, so she'd be like uh, just one of the shards of the Master Emerald that you find unrelated mm-hmm. to large robot shard. Um and that also comes with the, as Ghost Future Sonic is freaking out about this, it comes with a revelation revelation from Ghost of the Future, um, from Shard. There's too many Sonics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have, I apologize. Um, Into the hedgy verse, indeed. <laughs> Uh, the explanation from Shard of what I just told you guys earlier about the whole chaos energy cloud backup thing uh, bad news, Sonic. You were a copy of a copy. Um, I came before you, actually, um, kind of thing. And Ghost of Future Sonic does not take that very well. He does not like learning that. Um, Welcome course, to your clone saga. Yeah, yeah. And the reason that Shard knows is that he kind of pieced this together based on his own experiences of what happened to him getting stuck into Metal Sonic and then seeing Sonic another Sonic appear, um, he figured it out. But because the other Sonic, ghost, the ghost Sonic, hadn't had that bit of memory, he was completely oblivious to this. He just thought he, like, blacked out for a little while. Anyway. Um, so, uh, Ghost of Future Sonic, in STC's body, um, run, is base, he's two steps away from a complete breakdown and he runs off to uh challenge robotnik directly um and he is just tearing through the robotnik's forces to get there um that's bad but not completely it's a great distraction for the rest of the team um so um shard messages shadow to tell him what's up and shadow and the kids uh infiltrate the egg fortress while most of the well, Robotnik's attention and most of the army is focused on Gun and Sonic. Okay, Ish- and that's, that's issue 19. Um, just a bit happens in issue 19. <laughs> uh, so, Shadow and the kids on the Death Egg. Um, 
they they run into Nicole, who is also trying to sneak on to there. Sorry, I keep switching between Death Egg and Egg Fortress. It's the same thing. It um, means the same thing. So yes. you can use it interchangeably yeah. as far as I can tell. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're... conceptually, it's supposed to be the Egg Fortress that uh, Robotnik was first using in classic STC when he was in the special zone, if anyone remembers that obscure reference. Uh, but uh, in practicality, it's the first STC Death Egg, so you might as well just call it that. Uh, okay, so they're, Nicole and Shadow and Company are trying to get to the ROCC to get back their emeralds and hopefully um, cut the power to this whole fortress. Um, as a peace offering, Nicole offers the team a Chaos Emerald. She should not be able to have a Chaos Emerald. Um, but somehow she's managed it um, on her own. She found and retrieved one successfully. That is not one of the ones that uh, Silver and Sonic and Shadow had already gotten. So in total, that makes five with what Shadow has brought along. And there's two in the ROCC. The full set is present. Um, so congratulations. We found all the Chaos Emeralds. The comic is over. <laughs> Um, I guess we can end the uh, the the Q and A here then. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 no. We're yeah, here. and we're done. Good night. Uh, let's see. They. It's like there's no time to figure out how the hell Nicole has done this and why this breaks the rules that Sonic and Shadow uh, were assumed were true. Um, maybe they weren't. Um, so they call a truce because they need to deal with Robotnik. Um, Nicole uh, agrees to be put into uh, Sicily's handheld computer to uh, limit her abilities to affect things. So Nicole is in a little handheld. It would be the one from Sad AM. You know it well. Um, yeah, and that's how she gets like that. So they find the RCC chamber and Kintabor, who is still uh, like stuck there. Um, he knows how to get into the ROCC and through, um, whatever safeguards Robotnik has put on it, but he also wants to get out of here. So, um, they agreed to they, put, <laughs> they've they also they put all, him on the handheld computer. So him and and it's Nicole. a very, yeah, the, there's the image I wanted for that specifically was like Nicole on the screen goes, Hey, Hey, wait a minute. And then suddenly a download bar just squishes her face to one <laughs> side of the screen. Yeah. It's, it's a, there are two hefty computer programs on this little cell phone thing. Um, hold on. I need water. Big sip. Okay. And that, for uh, people who are reading my comic, is how Kintabor and Nicole, which is what I was hinting at, uh, get to know each other. Yeah. So, uh, Kintabor and Nicole are working together to hack into the ROCC and get it unlocked. Um, uh, thanks for coming, Kyle. We'll see you later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I'm not, I can't keep much of an eye on the uh, chat. But I'm, I'm, looks, doing, I'm doing yeah, that. Looks like people are being chill, so that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's Okay, but uh, so as they're working, Zachary finds them, um, and Zachary can actually fight pretty well in this. So he starts making trouble for everybody trying, and they're like, you know, trying to f defend uh, our computer people who can't get away from the ROCC. They're plugged in, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he. Uh, Zachary manages to get the five emeralds from Shadow. Shadow, you fucked up. Um, and gets everything into the ROC, into the ROCC. Um, so that means that it is now charged up with all of the emeralds. Oh no. Um, meanwhile, um, Sonic and Shard are fighting Robotnik. Um, Robotnik has come out in a mech to uh, address them personally. Um, also, probably mostly because he's having so much fun. He loves fighting Sonic. Um, and but behind them, the Death Egg starts to transform, and it's going to be kind of like 
kind of a metal overlord kind of vibe, like Sonic Heroes, um, with Zachary uh, riding at its head with his robot, his his robotic arm, and probably his other cybernetic cybernetics literally fused to the machine. Um, yeah, the, 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 I, I did a concept for that once where Metal Overlord had a tongue and Zachary was the tip of that tongue. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he would have gone with that. I just thought it was uh, <laughs> just like, like a his mega mind. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so Zachary goes after Robotnik because this is his, his best opportunity to finally get rid of Robotnik and take over his empire. Um, and uh, I don't know how, but maybe there's going to be like a window in his chest or something in the Metal Overlord where you can like see everybody like tied up or whatever. Um, and uh, Ghost Feature Sonic sees that and that is the last straw for him. Uh, he taps into a power he did not know was uh, hidden in STC Sonic's body, which is that of STC Super Sonic. Um, we get the swirly eyes. We get the swirly eyes. And for anybody who doesn't know, um, STC Supersonic is not like normal Supersonic. Uh, he is a... When he is like fully charged up with Chaos Emergy, he is an uncontrollable demon of destruction. Absolutely ruthless. Very scary. Very bad. Very much very much like Broly from uh, Dragon Ball Super. Yeah. Yeah, when he's not charged up with energy, he's actually but, pretty chill. But he, but, but uh, when he's charged up, he's not just like Broly. He's having a great time. Broly's not having a great time. Um, yeah, it's it. It's, yeah. It'd be more like if yeah, like uh, as, it'd be more like Super Broly turned into like old school Broly. Yeah, it's, yeah. So it's very Broly. We're 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 not having. He's it's it's not great. Um, I mean, it's very good for. Uh, vaporizing robotics mech and things like that but um so uh super super sonic i don't know what to call him exactly it's it's every it's, there's three sonics now who are all here <laughs> and shard is here too um but yeah super sonic just goes bananas on robotic and the metal overlord at the same time uh he is absolutely tearing them up. Um, uh, Zachary was not expecting this, and uh, the ROCC starts to overheat, and uh, Kintobor warns Oops. that this is very bad. If this happens, its its explosion would probably take the whole city with it. Um, and th th them at Ground Zero are extremely dead <laughs> if that happens. Um Robotnik decides this whole scheme has just gone entirely too too bad, and he's like, "I'm gonna." He he p hits his ejector seat, which is just a rough shunt back to his home dimension. Um, and that's where it cuts into my yeah. issue uh, fifteen. That's how Robotnik was injured and why he uh, underwent his regeneration. If you uh, read my comic, yeah. uh, he was injured in that battle. Yeah, and he's just like, "Peace out." Um, have fun with this, Zachary. You are now tied to a giant metal thing that can't move dimensions. Good job. Um, yeah. Zachary really is in way over his head at this point. Um, Ghost of Future Sonic manages to wrest control back from Super um, with help from SDC, who has done this before, and uh, cheerleading from Shard, <laughs> who has dealt with being a killing machine himself. Um, but it's still, it's there too late to get to the ROCC in time to uh, cool it back down. Um, but um, uh, Kintipur and Nicole have still been working on unlocking it, and they get there just in time. Um, oh, also, unrelated to this, but Shard has to call uh, Crystal, and he's just got her on in storage, basically. He's got a little compartment or something, but that's she's unconscious at the moment. Um, she's fine. She's fine. She'll be fine. Um, but uh, uh, just as the ROC gets unlocked, Shadow's right there, and you know what Shadow's good at? Chaos control. Um, <laughs> and so time stops. Uh, he freezes and everything, and the. Uh, space between, which is in Ghost of the Future lore, kind of 
the place you go to when you do chaos control to move from one place to another, it's kind of just a empty uh, dimension that kind of is saturated over reality. So, uh, and Shadow enters that space. Um, and in that space, he can encounter Sonic and uh, Ghost of Future STC and Super together. Probably Shard is there too. Um, and uh, he can talk to them about what, what the hell's going on and what they're going to do. Sh but of course, Shadow can only hold back the energy of the ROCC for so long. It's got to go somewhere. Um, he, but uh, he, in, he doesn't have to um, release all of it. He can use some of that energy of the explosion. And he uses that to send uh, STC Sonic and Super home. Um, but that really is only going to take up a tiny bit of this energy. For the rest, he decides to take it himself. Um, I'm sure that Ghost of Future Sonic is not happy about that, but Shadow is not uh, up for debate at the moment. So, reality snaps back on, and Shadow takes the entire uh, explosion of the ROCC into himself, and it burns him from the inside out. Um, but uh, as he's burning, he teleports SDC Sonic and the Death Egg back to their own world. Let's see. But then, something more than just him burning out happens. Um, oh wait, no. Wait, well, hold on. I'm forgetting exactly how we had this happen. Uh, yeah, there's a missing step here. <laughs> anyway, um, so it looks like, uh, wind back, like five seconds. Um, Shadow burns out. He does the chaos control. Suddenly, everybody is in the in midair. <laughs> the thing they were standing on is gone, um, which is not great. Uh, probably Sonic is going to be knocked out. Um, and so it's just, like, no more Sonic, just Chaos Emeralds. Um... Uh, but here's the thing. This is Silver's time to shine. The whole For the whole comic, Silver has never been able to fly. At the best, he's been able to levitate something else and stand on it. But he's the only one here who can do this. He reaches out with his power, finally breaks through uh, his emotional barriers about his self-confidence and what he can do, and the physical barriers of the horrible injuries that have uh happened to his hand hands and he we're flies. sorry about that he's he'll be fine um he finally flies and he catches everyone silver finally can do silver things <laughs> hooray the comic's almost over good for him and it seems like they've saved the day everything is fine the city was saved um, but, then... but then there's a step missing here in the outline and the step is Shadow who seemed like he was unconscious starts to move twitching uh, moving unnaturally um, and a black arm's third eye opens on his forehead as he still seems to be unconscious and as if he's being puppeted he reaches out and with a bunch of that stored up chaos energy he has, he tears a hole in reality. And through that hole, the second devourer appears. The second devourer is the thing that uh, Scourge was working for on Mobius with an E. That giant malevolent cloud of uh, destruction and uh, entropy. <sighs> Sorry, a lot of talking. Um, and at the same time that this happens, Nicole screams, uh, and her appearance changing as she realizes that uh, her mission is complete. She has achieved the goal that was set out for her. 
and she changes back uh, her appearance changes she changes back from uh the kind of malevolent look that she has to probably the reboot look of nicole um where she looks much more friendly and she is terrified because she knows what's coming um, yeah, everything has been manipulated by the second devourer wanting to enter this universe yes and because he's on. hungry because he's hungry he's so hungry just give him your reality to eat he's wasting away he's nothing but bones and spooky clouds but he's always bones and spooky clouds <laughs> Let's see. It is very much like yeah. being visited by a a unicronic version of the Grim Reaper. Yeah. And just in case you don't know what the second devourer looks like, I have a picture here. Um, the second devourer is a villain from uh, Archie Comics, uh, the Silver Age uh, miniseries in Sonic Universe that I wrote. Um, that is, he looks like this. He's bad news. Um and he is kind of implied to be a continuation of whatever the time eater was. He is. I think I, I remember we said we were going to go with like the second one of that just because it looks like the yeah. Green Reaper. Yeah. 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 And for this version, I think we're going to go with number two. Be number three is the one from Archie. Um, I think number two looks cooler. So we're going to do that. Um so that is what you should picture in your head. Is that the size of the entire sky, basically? Yeah. Oh, when I called him Eudachronic, I didn't mean it quite that literally. But he's, okay. he's, he's a big boy. Um, he's been snacking on worlds, of course yeah. he is. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. I mean, Nicole probably knows what his name is. is they call him the Second Devourer. Is that how he gets his name? Because in, in Silver Age, he doesn't have a name in text. It's... Shameless Pride says, it's the end, but cooler. Yes! <laughs> we, were yes! Little, we were literally talking about that yesterday. <laughs> the end is nothing more than the moon dipped in grapefruit. Can we not get something like this? <laughs> yes, and yes, the second devour is a, t a pun on the time eater. Um, yeah. Also, I need another water break. I'm not, I don't usually talk this much. But we're getting there, we're getting there. We've got that much more to go. Um, mm -hmm. so now we're on issue 22. I think we kind of did 20 and 21 together. Uh, <sighs> okay. So the second Vera descends and, uh, just like what we saw on Mobius with an E, um, uh, it's petrif his petrification, uh, powers start to affect the world. And that petrification is him basically absorbing the time the life of the world both together it's very um, um it's, it's very weeping angel isn't it mm -hmm. mm. so this this petrification uh expands with the clouds of the, se the second devourer um uh sonic wakes up and he sees what's happening and he's like, okay, I need to make up for the entire mess. I just had a gigantic hand in helping happen. Um, he takes the emeralds and he goes super. Um, good super this time. Normal super. Um, and this, despite... is ghost, this is ghost super. Yes. So we'll come up with some cool little thing for him to look like. Um <sighs> Yeah, this is Sonic finally in his full regalia as the the spirit guardian of the emeralds. Um, and despite everybody's warnings, because they've seen this happen before with Scourge, um, he charges the dev second devourer uh, directly. And basically it's just a spark disappearing in a giant cloud of darkness. He's gone. Um uh, and the second devourer's uh, clouds continue to advance, but uh, Silver and Venny use their combined uh, psychic shield that we've seen before, again, on Mobius with an E, that is able to repel the power of uh, the second devourer. Um, and they all, they have, there's no way of, of fighting the second devourer head on or saving the city at this point, so they just escape the uh, 
the kids, Shard, and uh, Shadow. Yeah, they have to flee at the moment yeah. because they're, they're just no match. And at the moment, uh, the second Devourer is just turning their world into Dr. Stone. Yeah. So yeah. they need a plan. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Blue, Blur Art, Blue Blur Art, Shadow's here. Uh, at this point, he's unconscious again. Um, yeah, he's pretty messed up. Yeah, he's he's not. Lo- he's smoking slightly, probably, <laughs> at this point. <laughs> um. But yeah, he's he's there. There uh, again. Uh, Silver is carrying uh, everyone. Uh, I need. I need. Hang on. Someone's uh, buzzing oh, no. me. Right back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm gonna keep scooting along. Uh. So they're heading back towards uh the, the new Chaotix mansion. Um. But um, the clouds of the second of ours, uh petrification can move faster than they do. And as they're approaching the mansion, they see it engulfed and destroyed. Um, by the time they get there, um, the bodies of the, their parents and probably Venny's bodies too, Venny's body too, are all petrified. Um, not great. So they can't rest here. There's there's nowhere to go nearby that's safe. Um, uh, uh, at that point, basically everyone's out of ideas. They have no idea what to do with any of this. But Nicole, right. oh hello, we're back. Yeah. All we did yeah. was cover parents got parents got turned to stone. Oops, bad. Sorry about that. That was just the neighbor. Yeah. Uh, so Nicole speaks up again. This is not the Nicole that we've come to know so far. She's much nicer. She's extremely penitent for what's happened. Um, she's just wrestling with two centuries of guilt and shock and horror at everything that she is. So she's not very having a great time, yeah. but yeah, she has an idea. <laughs> yeah. she, they need her and she's wrestling over what have I done yeah. sort of yeah. thing. And she she explains what happened to her. Um, she has been under the control of a program that was designed to make her find a way to welcome the second devourer to this world. Um, and Shadow was the the key to that. Um, Shadow also was designed to activate when a situation like this was presented to him and opened the door. Um, but now that that uh, mission has been completed, Nicole, that program has ended and Nicole has snapped back to her original personality. Um, she's finally herself again, but she has to deal with what they did. Um, and of course, this program was made by Gerald Robotnik in his most omnicidal fit of rage. You know. How many times can Shadow destroy the world? We may never know. Um, but anyway, that's what happened to Nicole. Um, and, but she has one idea about how they can maybe fix this. Uh, she knows where the Master Emerald is. It is still on Angel Island. And uh, that might be the only thing that they can they could possibly use to uh, fight back. So, with no other plan... They head towards the island with Nicole guiding them there. It is water time again. <sighs> Any questions at this time? Yeah, we'll just give it a moment for everyone yeah. to digest. Every, everybody's we, typing we, we curiously. A, <laughs> yeah, we we had a we covered a lot there. Yeah, it's slightly. Black armsy. I mean, the black arms would not want this either. They just want to eat the planet. They, they don't want it unalived, in a very literal the, sense. <laughs> technically, that's what the second devourer is doing as well. Yeah, it's yeah. He's just having eating a in a different way. Where's Tikalas again? Uh, she's inside a fragment of the Master Emerald yes. that they happened to get after defeating Metal Tikal. Uh, uh, the Master Emerald is not unattended. We will be getting to that. Um, but yeah, Shard has the shard of Tikal. Um, ah, I see what you did there. In his little glove box or whatever he's got. Um, 
Yeah, I'm absolutely going to keep drawing ghost feature characters. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, um, you definitely have to do at least a small doodle of like the super ghost. Yeah, and we've it. like That's we've covered at least like three like totally rad alt forms for characters already in the outline that need to be drawn. So, like a brief sketch of some of those has got to be on the Ted cards. Yeah. Uh, we're second of our made for Ghost of the Future first. Actually, like Silver Age. Definitely Silver Age. Yes, it was made for Silver Age, and then as we were discussing uh, what should be the biggest bad of Ghosts of the Future, was like, oh, let's make it this. Um, let's see. Yes, Gerald is mad because Maria died. This this would have been a very last minute thing for him, is... Uh, making Nicole doing this to Nicole who could then do it to like change shadow with her nanites to, to make this happen basically. I think Gigi has drawn a ghost feature supersonic as have I um, multiple times. I haven't hit on a design that I'm really happy with yet. So Let's see. Any more questions? I don't know if I'll draw a, a two-page spread snooper, but um, I don't know. I'll draw something. <laughs> okay, let's get back to it. Um, so, the gang arrive at the island. Um, the island has been grounded for the last two centuries. Um, probably right off, not too far away, somewhere off the coast of California. Um but it doesn't, and uh, uh, Sonic and Shadow intentionally avoided this place because of, you know, the metric ton of trauma surrounding it for them. Bad um, mojo. Yeah, not a great time. Uh, but it doesn't look the way that they thought it would. Uh, a huge uh structure has been built over the top of it that uh, seems to be a replica of the Ark. Um, uh, Nicole shamefully admits that yes, that's exactly what it is. Um, they've the spread of the petrifying clouds has slowed and it hasn't reached this point yet, but they can see its uh, storm in the distance. Um, I'm gonna add that actually, <laughs> but they can see the oncoming. Storm in the distance. Uh, this is a this is Nicole's uh, true home. Um, it is a uh, she's recreated the place where she was born and where she grew up, which is the Ark, and built it around uh, the the fallen island. This has been her project for the last two hundred years. She's had plenty of time to do this. Um, since like it is, it. yeah, since it's her home, this is a top of the line, extremely high tech, completely unmanned uh, installation. Uh, it is outfitted with the same kind of anti spirit tech that we saw her use on Sonic in uh, issue 9 and 10, um, which uh, allows her to completely it's made out of anarchy barrel energy so it can completely block chaos energy um so uh she used that shielding to uh basically contain the master emerald's energy and hide it from anyone who would want to uh find it or use it um as well as uh reinforce the entire base as well as probably making uh, robotic security that is armed with the same weapons. Weapons made out of the same uh, stuff. Um, but and we've, got lot, we've got a lot of artificial chaos at this point. Yeah. So, uh, Nicole's like, okay, we're here. I'm just going to log into the computer and we'll get, and we'll get all this uh, deactivated and go to the Emerald. Um, but when she goes to log in, the computer no longer recognizes her. Oops. Um, because her program has so significantly, she's not running that same program. She's is significantly different on a coding level. Um, so yeah, she is no longer recognized as admin. So they're going to have to uh, 
fight their way through or and hack their way through. <clears throat> they set up a bit of a camp. Um, at this point, Shadow wakes up. He is weakened. He's very much weaker. Uh, the charge of Chaos Energy basically burned out all of the remaining nanites in his body, so he's lost his uh, regeneration and his uh, functional immortality. Um, and he's gone blind. <laughs> Bad day to be Shadow. Um, well, but... We've stabbed Silver through his hands and now we've blinded uh, blinded Shadow. Oh yeah, and uh, Sonic was killed in the first issue. So yeah. we've, <laughs> we've traumatized these three. Not even to mention Blaze. <laughs> Blaze like... uh, oh Jesus Christ, I forgot what we did to Blaze. Oh, They're oh, fine. Oh. Trauma. <laughs> uh, this is a dark, edgy fan comic for cool <laughs> teens. Um... Uh, but, uh, Shadow has his, uh, ability to sense chaos energy, which was already strong, has, uh, increased tenfold. So he's able to sense and navigate the world using that instead, um, to some degree. I, I assume it'd be kind of like a, a tough situation where, like, he, he can do almost everything, but they're, like, he can't read, he can't see, uh, in a true way. Yeah. And uh, T-Call wakes up. Um, they don't release... I had... This was a, a different uh, T-Call... This is a different draft where she was uh, contained in a different way where they she was in a chaos drive and they break her out. But she's just going to be in an emerald chart because that makes more sense. Um, yeah, we have a few ver to... versions because we've, we've had to hammer this story around yeah. a lot. <laughs> There's so many ways this could have gone. This is, this, this is the most direct version. Um, and as you can see, it's not very direct. <laughs> um, okay, so they're in, they're facing this entire arc. Um, also, I should note that we have this line denotes where um, we've passed the point where we have intense detail for anything. So it'll be speeding up from this point. Uh, the gang are going to split up to use their various abilities and specializations to get through to the Master Emerald. Uh, uh, Sisley, Nicole, Kintabor, and Shard, the tech guys, are going to be uh, working on getting into the computer and disabling the robotic defenses. Um, this is a great opportunity uh, for Kintabor and Nicole to talk some more because they're going to be kind of buddies. Um, uh, to call in Shadow are going to use their chaos sensing abilities to pinpoint the exact location of the Master Emerald within the complex. Um, this is also a very important point for them because <sighs> Shadow and Tikal, despite sharing a huge part of their lives, very rarely have actually talked to each other. They don't know each other that well, but this is at this point they're going to find out just how much they have in common and how much they both share uh, what a huge connection and love they share for Sonic and that really brings them together. So um, Sonic is the unifying principle of the universe. It, basically, yes. He's very charismatic. Um, and then Silverblaze and Zinni are going to be our feet on the ground uh doing the actual hard work of blasting through and and did you just call Venny fear the feet on the ground okay uh two out of the three people have feet on the ground <laughs> um they're gonna be the ones doing the uh heavy lifting in a wheelchair uh, yes well no she's not in a wheelchair she's she's just a ghost right now her her body Every, got petrified everyone. Everyone's ghosts. Yeah. I would have liked to keep her around. We might we might try to do a thing where they get back to the mansion just in time to save her body and they bring that along, but if we don't nah, do it's that, fine. Yeah. It's, it's fine. It's it's yeah. fine. It's fine. It's 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 freeze dried. <laughs> okay. So just um, on water. This will not be easy, but they'll they'll manage it. They'll pull through. Um they make it to the Emerald, and Tikal was literally the missing piece. Um, so she's able to uh, recombine the Emerald, restore its power. Um, and Kintabor suggests an idea based on what he's seen the A Angel Island of his world do. Um, he 
proposes that they that this emerald this sorry this island might be set up the same way to work as a giant ancient echidna flying fortress um and they plug it in and it turns out that yes it is equipped to do that and uh Tikal is able to drive the island while Silver and Vinny provide a psychic shield using their combined power, and Nicole can use the power of her uh, not arc uh, to augment the offensive capabilities of the island. So, hey, Evan, all... can, you, can you quickly show yeah. this picture so people people know where this reference is from? Uh... Which... Oh yes, hold on. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the SDC, the SDC floating island, um, can do this. Yeah, hold on a sec. I gotta pull up the image via uh, this stupid little thing that I have. Okay. Sonic open. gets all the bitches. Yes, he does. Wait, why is it not? Oh, because I'm stupid. Um, there it is. This is what it is. As you can see, island flying. It has giant laser. It's very cool. <laughs> So yeah, that's basically what they're doing, but combine that with probably an eclipse cannon, um, of like a mini eclipse cannon, basically. So that's what they're doing. Very nice. Um, okay. And Blaze will form the head. Um, Let's see. They attack the second devourer head on, and it appears that they get consumed much in the same way that Sonic did, but that was their plan. Um, the, using the shield to protect them, um, they're able to enter the pocket dimension within the second devourer's being. It's not like a literal like stomach. It's like you are transported to another realm. Um Let's the realm see. of digestion. Ugh. And so this is a pocket dimension that contains every time and place throughout the multiverse that the second devourer has devoured. Um, I think they're probably going to have to get off the island um, <laughs> to get further in. Um, but as they journey, they find that this place has a very weird sense of place and time. Everything is compressed and mixed up. And as they travel through uh, events from their own lives uh, and from similar situations from other worlds will kind of bubble up around them and they'll be acting out as kind of like this massive shadow play. So that's another opportunity to show more of like Nicole's backstory and Sonic and Shadow stuff and other worlds that uh the so that so this is cameo city um <laughs> right here oh, cameo and backstory said. city is what this is for um uh pretty much yeah it is yeah. the second of our stomach is the end of the world stage from 06 yeah pretty much yeah mm -hmm. and um yes even rouge and omega would probably show up here and it would torment shadow incredibly um hooray um, there is a Sonic and Shadow kissing moment, but it's back up, uh, where, when Shadow decides to sacrifice himself to save the city. Um, he's, Sonic's gonna give him a little smooch. <laughs> um, coast, kiss your homies straight on the mouth. Um, Shadow anyway. and Omega kissing. Uh, not in this one, there isn't. Not in this one. <laughs> uh, let's see. I lost my train of thought. Um, let's move on. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I forgot. Okay, they... The first uh, entity they encounter that tries to stop them is Scourge. And maybe Antique too, but I'm definitely Scourge. Um, Scourge has been uh, subsumed by the Second Devourer and is being used as the Second Devourer's mouthpiece because the Second Devourer doesn't really talk in a normal way otherwise. Uh, they're going to have to fight Scourge, who's trying to stop them from venturing deeper into this realm. Uh, they manage to get him to, to defeat him, and uh, Venny is the one who's able to reach out to Scourge's... Uh, inner self and bring him back to his wits 
Um, and then they all group up and go further in. Um, uh, talking is hard. Uh, You're almost see. there. I'm almost there. It's almost done. I, um, we believe in you. <laughs> this is the only way to save the world. Um, so they finally make it to Sonic, who, much like uh, Scourge, has been... Um, his will has been overtaken by the second devourer. And I have a picture for this as well. Hold on. Uh, I don't know if it would look exactly like this, but where did it go? Come on. There. Open. Boop. I think that it would probably be something along these vibes of kind of everything that makes Sonic Sonic is being whittled away by the uh, second devourer's slow consumption of his being, um, which is really kind of a uh, externalization of what's happened to him as a person where he's, over the time of his death, he's kind of lost a huge sense of his his uh, self, his ego, um, his confidence in his own convictions, um, which is really sad because that's kind of his greatest strength. Um, so this is him at his lowest point, the complete um, uh, death of his will, his identity. He's nothing but a battery for a battery and a weapon for the second devourer to wield. <sighs> Let's see. When Sonic meets Dark Souls. A little yeah. bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> he, the second devourer really is kind of more representative of the heat death of the universe yeah. than the end is. Yeah, it's very much just kind of the inev inevitability of nothingness um but anyway that's fun uh they are gonna have a big fight against sonic um they can get him to a standstill but unlike scourge he's not as easy to pull back um from the brink um but shard has an idea he realizes that he is remember he's basically a backup of sonic um still whole and uh, preserved uh and he convinces sicily to help him uh break his his bonds as a robot destroy the chaos drive that holds his spirit and let him recombine with sonic to become one complete being again and through that he can rekindle sonic's identity yeah. Shard I... <laughs> sacrificed himself. <laughs> yeah. He's dead, everyone. Yeah. Well, he's well, not he was dead. He's he's just re-entered the the Sonic continuum, <laughs> and and restored the the Sonic continuum. Because remember, this is th when Sonic did this. He had all the emeralds. This is the base code of Sonic being restored from a backup. Um, I also described it um, when we were outlining this as it's kind of like tempering chocolate, where when you temper chocolate, you have, you can have your big pot of melted chocolate. If you add a little bit of tempered chocolate, it will realign the crystalline structure of all the other melted chocolate into tempered chocolate. So Sonic is chocolate. They're Remember all, that, everyone. It's all chocolate. Um, so that's how they get Sonic back to himself. And... Uh, <sighs> Let's see. Finally, the Chaos Emeralds and the Master Emerald are all together. The true power of Chaos can be unleashed. And it is time to fight and get super forms and fly around and do pretty energy attacks. This is, this is the final boss. This is what we all want. Crush 40 plays a song. It's great. Um, <laughs> they, they blast their way back out of the... Sec it, it would be Sonic, Silver, Shadow are probably taking the lead. Well, I think we're going to do Hyperforms. Yes, Dale the Chameleon. Um, why not? We've got all. We've got the whole. Um, the whole complement here. 
Um, so uh, it's going to be triple S super or hyper forms. Um, maybe stuff for the others. Why everybody everybody gets a form. Girls get, get forms. A, <laughs> everyone gets. Everybody gets a super form. This is the Oprah of, so, of super forms. We we are not holding back. Um, they are going to blast their way back out of the the second virus dimension. Punch in a big old hole in his chest. Um, they'll be super. They'll be super Sicily. And super, super Venny. <laughs> super Sicily has no powers to begin with, so she's just very shiny. Okay, so they're back out in reality, and they've got to finish the fight. Um, and this is where Silver takes the lead. Um, through the power of friendship, and oh no, is it working? Okay. Um, Sonic comes to the realization that the whole chosen one story that silver was told and that got him into this whole thing kind of wasn't true um honestly sonic has been making all of this up from the get go as has t call <laughs> and uh, it's not that silver is like divinely ordained per se to be a quote unquote chosen one. It's just that Sonic believed in him. He saw him and he's like, I believe that that guy can do it. And that was enough to shift reality just a little bit. And when Silver finally made the same realization about himself that, yeah, I can do it, that was the missing piece that gave Silver the ability that he needed here because chaos is power enriched by the heart basically the metaphor is if you believe you are a hero you, you can are be one yeah and it helps if you have a, a sonic the hedgehog who who cheers you on and forces you to do things <laughs> um but silver is able to uh using his powers push the second of our back through the rift in reality it came through and close that hole. <sighs> and they've done it. They've reunited the Chaos Emeralds and they've saved their reality and others. But before that, they don't just they don't just put push the second of our back. They are going to squeeze every bit of life and time that it has taken out of it and disperse it back into the universe. Yeah, the, the well, at least the most recent stuff it's eaten, like within the last like a uh, few hundred years. Yes. So, the multiverse, as far as they know, has been restored. The second Vara has been driven back to the furthest corners of existence, and the day is saved. And my throat hurts. <laughs> you want to have a moment? I'm just gonna take another drink of water. There's nothing else I can do. It's fine. But yeah, we'll have a bit of an epilogue, I think, to just kind of like, and where does everybody end up? Um, uh, in this version of the ending, Sonic and Shadow and Tikal all get to stick around because this is really about the triumph of life over pain and nothing and giving up. Um, but the people's like scars remain. Shadow is still blind. Uh... Venny is still uh, wheelchair bound. The kids are still scarred emotionally and physically. It's like you can't Cicely, fix that. Cicely lost her big metal yep, boyfriend. Yep, Cic Cicely lost her giant metal boyfriend. Um, uh, yeah, the parents who kind of realized they were not really very good at their jobs in the first place um, retire from the new Chaotix and let and the kids. Uh, kind of take up the reins of uh, kind of protecting the Chaos Emeralds and exploring the world and making sure that more horribleness doesn't arise again. Because I don't really see how they could go back to normal lives after everything they've done. They kind of have to have an ex extraordinary calling. <laughs> and uh, Sh Shadow is just sitting by himself in the gold ring until someone you know, comes to sit with him and talk with him. And because he's blind, he doesn't realize who it is for a short while until it clicks in his head. And yes, it's Rouge. 
she's alive. If he, she and Omega are back. They're alive. They've been restored because of them forcing the life out of the second devourer's stomach, giving him the worst stomach ache of all time. <laughs> so they're alive. He gets a happy ending, and Rouge is back, and she takes care of the blind shadow. From yeah. But also, like... Look, this is an extremely poly polyamorous shipping. Ev like, Rouge and Shadow are an item. Sonic and Shadow are an item. Sonic, T-Call, and Shadow are an item. Everybody is dating. It's great. Um, we're all 200-year-olds. Who, who gives a shit? Um, um, back in Mobius with an E, uh, Scourge and Ant Antique are okay. And Fiona's okay. So Scourge and Fiona can uh, make up and continue on. <sighs> Yeah, everybody. It's it's we we decided to go for as unmitigated and happy a happy ending as we could get. We've tortured these guys enough. Yeah. Yeah. I I I, I will f firmly emphasize that everybody, all, all these all these weird old people are dating each other, and it's <laughs> gonna be great. It is the biggest polyamorous um, social uh, senior citizen party ever. Yes. So yeah, that is the remaining outline. Hooray! It's not it's not perfect, but uh, we'd been waffling over ways this could go in various oh. different iterations for literally several years. And we we had had so many tangents. We got completely locked up, um, which was very funny. We literally last night everything under the cut. We sat down and and hashed it out in an, in an hour. Um, I'm very mad about that because it was really easy once we actually did it. <laughs> a, a lot of stuff ended up on the cutting room floor of stuff yes. that we wanted to do, but it like would have taken. A, I'd be collecting my pension by the time we got finished with it. Yeah, and it would it wouldn't be as as good. I think it just would have kept meandering. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. But yeah, that's where we ended up with that. Um, does anybody have any direct questions right now, or do we want to just go down the, the dock? I am waiting for questiones. Oh. But yeah, as we do that, as you can see, some of these uh, questions like, will Venny get to walk again? Uh, no. Thank you to Undead Rocket, Hollyad, and Yalsto, me there. Um, but, <sighs> yeah. It, I don't, I don't think she needs that for a happy ending. Like, that, you can, you can be disabled and be just fine. You're not handicapped, you're handy capable. Oh boy. Besides which, she can astral project. Yeah, she's got superpowers. But uh, yeah, I kind of imagine her like probably like superhero by night, like a uh, community theater person by day. <laughs> or maybe she'll be a voice actor. Do voice acting and then like on screen roles when she can get them kind of thing. I think that would be really fun. She'll have a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Cicely um, is not going to get her own cool powers, but she is going to go to college and learn super science, probably, uh, with the intention of finding a way to get her, her giant robot boyfriend back. <laughs> okay. From the chat, or Origin of Frost asks, how did I come with Silver's parents and siblings? Um <laughs> <sighs> for the parents, they are largely based on my own parents, for better or worse. Um, uh, it it was just largely kind of just an uh, expansion of the world building of the of Ghost of the Future as its own unique setting, um, and also just like as a teen, it was also a way for me to work through some of my own frustrations and and growing pains um for the sisters that's basically i took my own personality and split it down the middle where i have i do have a very kind of playful creative uh sociable side 
And then I have a side that's very analytical and judgmental and withdrawn. So I just took those and made them two people. <laughs> oh, I, I like this. So like a Vinny, uh, Vinny gets cool astral projection powers. Uh, mm. Sicily gets student debt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one might argue that's kind of cosmically balanced. Yeah, we also have a question from Demiostes and uh, Shameless Pride asking about the kind of Mexican influences on the comic. That's largely a result of just where I'm from in California is an area that has a, just a, a, definitely a, a significant mix of like Hispanic and uh, just standard white Americanness. Um, so I wanted to reflect that in the comics setting and the world building, and uh, it, it also goes back to like I feel like my family never celebrated Dia de Muertos. Um, I am thoroughly white, um, but it's. A holiday that I was familiar with because it was celebrating the community around me and uh, I've always really connected with it and I feel like it really reflects well on the themes of this story um, again it is death can also be a celebration of life which is very much how this all wraps up um, so yeah that's kind of how that got folded in yeah, and I like it. It it gives the comic a a very it gives it its own flavor that doesn't feel like a, just any other Sonic uh, world. Let's see. It is the <sighs> Sonic of Spanish accents. Yes. Um. Yeah. Uh, Noni art. Yes. There's going to be an archive of this stream. Um, and I will probably be um, cleaning up the outline a little bit more and posting it at some point, too. Um, we will get to inspiration stuff, uh, Dale, a little bit later. Um, I'm just going to keep working on the list. Let's see. Um, uh, we can also talk, uh, we were talking, uh, sorry again. We were also planning on talking a little bit about some of the stuff for Goods of the Future that didn't make it in. Yeah, let's uh, scroll down to that. Yeah, we, a lot, like I said earlier, a lot of stuff ended up on the cutting room floor. So if you guys would like that, we can talk about the kind of the stuff that we it might uh, at one point intended to do, but then sort of put to the one side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, let me, I'm going to pull up pictures because I've got pictures. Um, hold on. I'm just going to share my whole screen for that because it's easier than I have to like put the little file directory thing in there it's kind of annoying uh, let's see boop don't look into affinity uh, let's go back to Ch -ch 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 -ch. randomness file um so which one do you want to talk about first Uh, no one's sitting in here at the moment. Well, they don't know what they are. That was for you. <laughs> oh, wait for me. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Um, we could talk about the Black Knight one first. Um, yeah, let's talk about the Black Knight one because that's yeah, because that I was one that we almost did. We were very close to doing this one, um, which would have been much like the Secret Rings arc. It would have been a Song in the Black Knight themed arc, um, with the it would i think we were going to kind of base it on a kind of a grail quest story um, yes with uh, big the cat was literally going to be the fisher king yes and, and i remember yeah. Yeah, big... and i remember doing um some concept art for it where like robotnik and when i say robotnik i mean like the sat am version was going to be like the black knight version of vortigan from um yeah the Marfurian myth. Yeah. I had like a like a little Celtic king version of him. Yeah. So I, it's like I've got the drawing for that and Sniffly's there too. Um, oh, yeah. Sn uh, I gave yeah. Sniffly's a Celtic overlook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it had, um, it would have had uh, Sonic getting 
stuck as uh, Silver's uh, enchanted sword and uh, shard oh, yeah. slash metal sonic as his shield. Um, and they would have gone on a little little uh, adventure, and it would have. Uh, it's kind of a Sat AM esque version, so we would have had um, Sally as a not Robin Hood, and the Freedom Fighters as her her Merry Men kind of thing. Would Antoine have been Friar Tuck? I think Rotor would be a good Friar Tuck. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's yeah. probably better. <laughs> Yeah, so that was one of the things we were going to do. Um, what else have we got here? Um, hmm. Let me check the list. Oh, the alternate blaze. Um, oh, yes. I think a few people had a question about that. Um, that that one, unfortunately, really doesn't have that much to it. Um, let me show you where that started. That would be issue six. I think pages. Oh God, they're all freaking no. Um, this is so old. I don't know what's going on here. Issue no, it would have been the one before this. Um, issue five. There's one page where I teased a different a plot line about uh Sonic being. Uh, remembering the blaze from uh, the soul dimension and uh, being not understanding why there's another blaze um, which uh, ended up being totally irrelevant to the plot <laughs> um, but this, this is still true technically um, the world building of Ghost of the Future goes with the theory that there are two blazes. Um, there's um, the blaze from the soul dimension, uh, who's just, that's where she's from. And then there's the blaze that Silver knows, who was born in Sonic's world at more or less the same time as Silver. Um, and it's just that time is different. Time is offset between uh sonic's world and the soul dimension so um the the present quote unquote of the soul dimension was actually 200 years difference from uh sonic's present um so he just was in the future of a different dimension and he didn't know it um and that's why there's two blazes um but I was going to have a thing where time travel nonsense happened and Soul Dimension Blaze showed up and she'd be angry for some reason and uh, trouble would ensue. But that never happened. <laughs> so, uh, although Speaking of uh, time travel, I believe we had a different plan for um, Sonic that uh, was going to be a thing, like a big reveal, but then we kind of put that to the side yes um one of the things that we had uh planned was uh sorry <clears throat> clearing my throat how do i explain this one of the one of the reasons we didn't do this is because it's very messy and convoluted um it would be revealed that sonic uh when he uh Instead of Shadow being the one to absorb the explosion and save the city, it would have been Sonic, but he gets knocked way back in time and loses all, almost all of his memories um, and becomes chaos. Um, he is chaos. Um, and uh, it's and then it's like, uh, basically, we've run him through uh, basically all of Sonic Adventure and uh, then they have to get Chaos, who's dormant in the Master Emerald, and wake him back up and be like, hey, dude, you're Sonic the Hedgehog. Remember. Um, and then he would have been like, oh, shit, oh, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, God, yeah. I, I forgot the concept art we had for that whole dissolving yeah. into water yeah. thing. And this was very much something I wanted to do, because I think it's pretty cool, and it really reinforces the connection between Sonic and Tikal, and that's why um, Sonic is so heavily associated with, like, 
melting and water and stuff like that in the comic in general. And like uh, Antique has that one line where she's like, "You, I'm going to turn you into the monster you're meant to be. Um, which is like, I'm. she's like, I can see what you're supposed to be. I'm going to turn you into chaos. Um, but we didn't do that. Yeah, especially after uh, Frontiers came out and ruined that entire... <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't really work anymore. Um, no. Although there's a lot of things in Ghost of the Future where it's just like, this simply does not factor in later developments of Sonic lore, and we're just not going to deal with that. Let's see. Uh, Black Doom was going to be in the comic, <laughs> briefly. Yes. Uh, for a while, we thought he would be the big bad guy in the second Devourer, but then given the themes, we kind of changed that. Yes. Um it just it uh, there was more we could do with the second devourer because um, it didn't have as much established about it. Mm. Yeah. Let's see what else do we have. Um, Is this a test to see how far you bef- we can go before Sega gets involved? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think they're no. that bothered about. No, a they fan don't. Comment. No, I've wait, I've. Talk to my editors and the people I work with at Sega. They're aware of what I do um, with fan stuff, and it's fine. It's they're like as long as you don't claim it's official or try to sell it, it's fine. Um, so I don't do those things. Speaking of well, uh, which get your um, Ghost of the Future mugs now? No. <laughs> <laughs> But also, I have had people ask, like, is there going to be a print version of Ghost of Future? No, there will never be a print version of, of Ghost of Future because of that reason, is I don't want um, to be selling fan works like that. Yeah, Sega that, would definitely have a problem. Grand of a scale. Yeah. Uh, this is an option, is uh, instead of just getting exploded and t- going blind, Shadow would actually die and be a chaos ghost for the rest of the story. Um, mm-hmm. We had some ideas about that. Um, but again, it's it was. Oh, there's. Uh, uh, go down a second. The, at the bottom, at the bottom of your of the, the folder, I, there, there's like a like, little idea for Benny with uh, robotic legs. Oh, where was that? Oh, uh, yeah. It's at the bottom. Of that the was that was one of the options. Instead of a wheelchair, is giving her like uh, an exosuit sort of thing. Mm. Um, which I think it just kind of. Uh, would have been a little bit too much like beyond it's yeah. not realistic we, we have... per se yeah if, so we said we just gave her a wheelchair and let her rock it yeah yeah then a professor x that shit yeah she's just she's just great with the wheelchair um what else was there but yeah shadow shadow was almost a ghost um but again it's just a little bit too much to do in the very limited time we have uh at the end of the comic um and there's it's there's no real point to it except that I think ghosts are cool. Um. <laughs> now, why has that silly drawing of of me putting Groucho Marx glasses on uh, Shadow gone viral? Because it has for some reason. It's beautiful. That's why. Look at him. <laughs> it's just something that, it was just something I did as a joke. It's <laughs> and great. For some reason, everyone's sharing it. Why? It's good. Um. What else have we got? We had uh, alternate shard ideas. Where did that go? I just saw it. Um, where did you go? There you are. Ideas for, again, this is showing uh, his spirit form. Like, would he be partially destroyed? And we see, like, the ghost part sticking out. Um, uh, also, very so many ideas, like, how big is shard going to be? Exactly, like, how is he going to operate? Um there's a full like if he gets fully destroyed is he like that or does he look like sonic i don't know um well it, we had this idea that um chaos energy is a bit like putty what you imprint on it is what it becomes so yeah. why not Isn't yeah it? what else have we got oh yeah there's like the earliest version this is before Shard was like a character. This would be Shard before Shard existed in Archie. I was doing this. Um, so, yeah, this comic goes that far back. Very much so. Let's see. I have a hyper silver idea. This is my, maybe what he'd look like in the end of the story. Who knows? 
Oh, uh, yes, Blue Blur saw uh, Marine. <laughs> this goes to the future Marine, who does not appear in the comic because there's no place for her in the plot. But she would have been uh, probably like an internet friend of Blaze who's very much into conspiracy theory stuff. Um, yeah, big Peridot vibes, but Peridot didn't exist yet. Also, I screwed up and her, <laughs> her eyelashes are up here, even though her eyelids are down here. <laughs> I messed up. Um, we had a if the Mobius with an E arc had gone in on longer, um, we probably would have seen the Silver of that world, who uh, was probably going to be this sort of character, so like uh, someone that Antique had kind of abused and molded into uh, a tool for her to use. Um, his name would have been Tarnish, but that's about all I know about him because all I was like is that's a good name for an anti-silver is Tarnish. But yeah, he had a bad time. She probably cut off his arms um, to make him use his <laughs> psychic powers more. Um, she's a nice person. So all we did was stab him through his palms. Yeah. Give, we just gave him stigmata. He's yeah, fine. He likes it. He doesn't like it. Um, I uh, I think those are the big ones. Um, I've got like some AU, oh, AUs uh, of uh, the AU, but they are not. I, I I remember that there was some elements of stuff that was going to be when they were on a Mobius with an E mm -hmm. um, that didn't quite end up happening. Uh, like I seem to remember one time, like you said, like like a silver was going to get a hole punched for it. Oh god, yeah. Um how did that work? Um uh, basically like the entropy of the universe was so bad that y yeah. even a fatal wound wouldn't kill him. Yeah, I think it was something to do with how anarchy barrel works as kind of like because it, it it's kind of the opposite of chaos energy that it kind of slows everything down and stills it. Um that Silver would get grievously injured and they would basically freeze time around the wound so that it can't kill him. So he'd just be walking around with like a cartoonish hole in his chest. Um, I don't remember why or how that resolved. I think probably it didn't resolve, which is why it didn't end up happening in the comic. I think we wrote that, you, you wrote that arc out and then I pointed out, does Silver still have a great big hole in his chest? Like, oh no. That's going to hurt when he gets home. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's the big ones. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think that's um, most of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, I'm going to say thank you to Girlcraft03, Girlcraft Yui, Har Yui Haruna, Gala Howl, Good Mug Kip, uh, Jasmine by the Bay, uh, Jesse Westmont and Aurora Law for all asking about storylines, and I think we covered. Yeah, we covered that stuff. Let's see. Boop, boop. Um, what do we want to do next? Let's see. Um, I did have a question here from Chrysalis the Butterfly in Blade the Eternal um, <clears throat> about um, Cicely and Venny if they were to appear in the IDW comics, um, I, I did, which uh, will not ever happen, um, no, for starters, way, but no. um, they have had cameos, and like in a hypothetical, like what would I do with them if they were there? I don't think they need to be there. Like, we have characters who largely fill similar functions and have similar character types. Like, we have... Uh, Venny is very much a tangle. They're very similar people. Um, and uh, Cicely is uh, kind of like Lanolin, kind of like Whisper, a um, little bit like Belle. It's like we don't need more of those types of people in the story so like i'm happy with them living in their own fanfic world they don't need to be in idw basically they have their home yeah don't take them from it it's all good um 
we got a few questions kind of just about the basic nature of ghosts, um, which we kind of touched on with the uh, whole chaos emerald backup drive thing. Um, Ghost of Future is, for the most part, a thoroughly agnostic story and, and setting. Um, the highest power we know of is just chaos em energy as this raw force of reality. Um, and uh, chaos spirits are the identities of people. You could call it the soul, but it's not the soul in like a traditional like Christian religious context. Uh, it is just, it is all of their memories and identity, what makes them them. But there's nothing more significant about it than that. It's that getting imprinted onto chaos energy and being perpetuated through that. Um, uh, at the moment in the setting, um, I don't know if there are more ghosts. Definitely not more ghosts than the ones in our gang that are of that level of higher function, but like we know there are other ghosts. They've appeared in Sonic games. Um, so they're out there, but I don't think they're as conscious as our main gang, because they're probably a lot older and more deteriorated, because that is deteriorated, because that is a sad reality of these ghosts is they won't last forever. Um, either they will, by will, fade back into the flow of chaos energy, or if they hold on for too long, they will deteriorate and lose their, their, their sense of self will slowly be destroyed. Sonic came very close to that, um, and he almost succumbed to it in the finale. So think about that the next time you play Sandopolis. Yeah. <laughs> Those poor bastards. Um, Feel pity for them. <laughs> um, got a question from Hoshina Waddle about um, Tikal giving Sonic her jewelry as kind of like his initiation. And what was up with that? It was mostly just a visual way to show that she's passing on a bit of her power to him to make him part of this whole thing. Um, there wasn't much more to it than that. Um, and he gets cool. He gets more accessories as he gets more powerful. <laughs> Get all of the, the, the alternate versions, kids. Um, uh, we kind of touched on chaos a little bit with the alternate stories. Um, uh, he's he's probably just sleeping in the Master Emerald. Um, he doesn't come up. He could be dead. I don't know. He's not important. Yeah, he's secretly Sonic. Um, <laughs> he could still happen. <laughs> it's just that whole epilogue. So we just do all that crap. Um, he's, that, that he he uh, he returned to his home planet to be with his people. Yes. Oh God. I have to go now. My <laughs> planet needs me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got a question from. Oh, that was from Good Kip again, and from Gala Howell. Um, we have uh, when Sonic is possessing Shadow or anybody else, can he taste? Yes, he can. Um, and occasionally he does. They go get food together, and it's cute. Um, let's see. Oh, but part of that is that um, Shadow's sense of taste is kind of weird. Um, it's just because of the weird genetic experiment nanite thing that he is. Um, he doesn't. Things don't taste the same to him as they do to most people. So. Uh, if Sonic's possessing him, that's what he experiences. So it's not like he can't just go have a chili dog tragically. They don't taste as good. Oh, the pain of that. Yeah. That's the, that's, that's the worst thing that's happened to him. Why don't I just have this image of like possessed Shadow taking a bite of a chili dog, pausing, and then just dropping to his knees going, yeah. no! No! <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, is one by VV about will the spirits uh, pass on? Uh, no, they will not because I don't want to. 
Um, let's see, we covered chaos. Thank you, S Forever, for asking about that. Um, oh, and the chow. Um, I don't. The chow have a, did appear in uh, epi, in issue three. Um, they're kind of like mini chaos spirits in this uh, setting, which ties into what chaos himself is in this setting was a chaos spirit. Um, uh, hang on, it's my neighbor again. Mm. But uh, yeah, that's why they reappeared when the chaos emeralds started to be used again. Um, and so they're just vibing. They're doing stuff. And like, they're uh, they're kind of just culturally known in the world because of what we saw in like Sonic Adventure and SA2, um, which is why like Finny had a, a chow of them, a chow toy, um, stuff like that. Uh, let's see. What happened to Sonic's belongings after he died from Yui Harana? Um, Sonic doesn't have a lot of, uh, belongings. Like, anything he probably owned was at, um, Tails' one of Tails' workshops. And that would have just been left abandoned because Tails died too. Um, as for his body, if we did a, um, fully adapted version of this, I think in the section where they're exploring Angel Island, we would probably come across his body being preserved in one of Nicole's labs, which would be extremely morbid and creepy, and I would have a great time drawing it. I really want, uh, Silver to be just rooting around in something and just pull out one of Sonic's shoes and just be like, oh, holy fuck, and throw it across the room or something like that. Uh, we did have some plans for, um, briefly, for Amy, Knuckles, and Tails as ghosts. Oh, God, yeah, up. we forgot to talk about that. That was the biggest branch we didn't go down for the finale was, mm -hmm. um, uh, on Angel Island, the reason that the that Nicole wasn't able to get to the Master Emeralds was because the spirits of Knuckles, Amy, and Tails were haunting it, um, and they were trapped on the island, and they were very angry. <laughs> and the whole like exploring the island chapter would have been uh, f discovering them, escaping their wrath, and finally getting to talk them down and bring them back to themselves, but. We decided not to do that because just it was a lot to cover, and there wasn't enough time to really give Tails and Knuckles and Amy their fair due as characters to like go put them through an arc, um, as well as like Sonic would not be present for that just logistically because he's in the second of our, um, so we and he would be the most important person to be there f to meet them, so it's like. He, if we can't do those kind of scenes, there's not much point to it other than the initial shock value. So we decided to uh, forego that and just make that uh, section of the story shorter and more direct. But again, we have that uh, backstory and cameo palooza section that we could totally stick some Tails and Knuckles and Amy stuff in there. So we'd probably see them at least a little bit. Uh, I, think that, I think that covers mostly everything at this point. Yeah, let's see. I think I got a question from Leaf Gun. Uh, how long were uh, Shadow and Sonic around before they met Silver? It was about 200 years. Um, yeah. Just kind of every couple of decades they'd uh, move on to somewhere else. It kind of just bumped up and down the the west coast and uh like uh central and and kind of the north half of south america probably who knows maybe they went to canada imagine hey. <laughs> um mis miscellaneous character questions uh so we're making good we're making some decent progress through this um won't take too long 
what's the deal with Blaze? Blaze is a character that I feel didn't really get her full due in the story. Oh um, god, did, did did everyone sort of get the whole tragic backstory we gave her about her mother? Uh I think they would have. It was in it was in the comic um <clears throat> a little bit. But yeah, the she does have a tragic backstory in that um uh she comes from a family that has these chaos powers cuz just some people have those as as in the games. Um but unfortunately um she inherited her mom's uh, fire powers a bit too early and ended up burning down their house and her mom died in the blaze. And is that's why... Um, that's why they called her blaze. That's why her dad um, uh, disabled her powers or at least seriously limited them for most of her life um, by removing the, the gem that she was born with on her forehead. What, how exactly and why how why he knew to do that and how is just new ca- the new chaotics have super science at their disposal they figured it out um that's the best i've got for you but yeah i feel like of all the characters i feel like she got the l- she could have been served better by the story if i'd planned ahead for her presence better in the first place and not just been like it's a silver story blaze should be here which was basically the train of thought when i started so sorry to blaze she will probably get to get back together with silver by the end of the story at least i think that there'd be the point where they're about to sneak into the uh egg fortress would probably be the point where Blaze is like, well, we might die, so I I want to give you a smooch um, before we do that. <laughs> and that's what gives Silver his confidence back. Yes. Um, let's see. Got that. Um, Next question is from Master of Cosmos, Cosmos Lurks. Um, you can see the centuries have met- mellowed shadow, but while the trauma, but while the trauma has made Sonic more willing to give into anger, has it also made Shadow afraid to be ruthless? Yes, absolutely. Shadow um, is mu- is keenly aware of the kind of power he wields and is very scared of going too far. Um, so when he goes way way too far and lets the second devourer in, he's he's not happy about it. Um. Yeah, that's that's a thought that never leaves Shadow's mind. Um. Okay, let's see what's this one. Um, I'm gonna. This one is uh from Lacrio Lacri Lois. Um. Asking about the my philosophy behind Shadow's characterization. Um. I'm not going to go into super detail about it. You can find um, stuff on my Tumblr about that if you search the Geotiff lore um, tag. But uh, basically, with a lot of characters in Ghost of Future, it's kind of like... It's a study of character taken out of the context we've seen them in in official stuff and seeing how they change... like how they're influenced by their environment. So that was the same case with shadow is um, changing his relationship to his power and uh, just pushing his timeline forward as far as we could to really let him mature. Um, And that's how he got to where he is in ghost of future. Uh, Let's see. You still there? Mm-hmm. Okay, just checking. Got real quiet. Um, so we already talked about Metal Sonic in the outline, so thank you to the Flip Lear and Steph Cube for that. Um, but we know what happens to Shard. 
Um, world building from Ho- Hose and BMR. Um, how did Amy die? Metal Sonic killed her off panel. <laughs> I didn't. I, it was that's one of the things where it just it would have been gratuitous to go into that. Um, so we didn't. As for uh the other two, uh Knuckles and Tails, I think that how did I think it was yeah it was Shadow. Shadow killed him. Um. Uh, of course, while well, he was under mind control, he didn't want to do that. Um, this, these ones were covered, and I unfortunately lost. Oh, this was covered. I lost the questioner's name. I'm sorry about that. But also, the Babylon rogues were never intended to appear in Ghost of Future. They just never factored in. So, yeah. Let's see. Uh... Hello, people are home. Did you get uh. any coffee? Oh my god! Peanut butter coffee. Lavender. Oh my goodness. I will take the lavender, thank you. I got iced coffee. What? There's more? Irish cream. Or just straight black. I'll take the Irish cream, thank you. Um, sorry about that. I got coffee. Hooray! Um. Yay. Let's see. From Yui Harana, we have what happened to Shadow's original air shoes when he decided to change. Um, he what did happen to his, his shoes? Just wore out. I think his original air shoes. Um, uh, just because time unfortunately happened, he and he started wearing regular shoes and put his his remaining two limiter rings on his wrists uh, instead. Um. And then from Onion Bird, uh, oh, Orion Bird, I'm sorry. Um, uh, where did his new shirt, shoes came from? Did Cicely make them? No, he probably just bought them. Um, uh, extreme gear is pretty normal and common in, in Silver's time, so you can just go get air shoes. Um, let's see. Uh, again, from y- Yui Harana, um, Haruna. Uh, Soliana would be around, but Elise would be long dead by this point of the the present of the story. Um, but I mean, she would have lived a long and happy life, probably, not being bothered by the flames of we're disaster so, or Sonic. Was Soliana or... Solly ruled by Elise the the seventh or eighth? Pro. <laughs> we may never know. I'll stay. I'll stay up at night wondering. Um, a president is definitely not still around. He was probably bummed when he found out what happened because he really looked up to Sonic and Shadow. Um, the gun commander was probably secretly happy that Shadow was seemingly dead. <laughs> also, I'm betting... Actually, no, that's not true. He was probably one of the people at Gun who was like uh, protesting what was going on with Nicole taking over and would have gotten ousted pretty quickly. And by ousted, we mean killed. Yes. Coffee. Coffee. I've been given a donut. This is the best day. Um, uh, okay. Uh, let's see. From Stormer Aurian. Aurian. I don't know how to say that. Um, uh, considering how many languages Shadow learned. Uh, actually, he only knows probably English and Spanish. Um. I don't think he's, he's, he learned languages out of necessity, not any sense of curiosity. So, yeah, I don't think he knows anything else. Maybe a little Latin, just because he was raised by a super scientist. Um, but other than that, no. In my can- head canon, he's French. He's French. Great. Oui. <laughs> Shadow just speaks French. He's just never mentioned it. Um... We've covered, we've covered, uh, this is from Holly uh, Ad. Um, we've covered the first part with Gunn's goal was Nicole's goals. Um, for other members of the New Chaotix, I think the most significant that we didn't see was Cream, who just, who survived the initial massacre um, happily and eventually uh, 
g- grew up and joined the New Chaotix and was one of their key members after the initial first generation. Um, I think probably Mighty and Ray got involved too. Um, but after that, I don't really, it's just kind of a question marks until the, the story is present. But yeah, they, other than, uh, Rouge and Omega getting petrified in another dimension, I think for the most part, they were, the other new chaos were probably fine. I bet a few at some point, uh, got taken out by Nicole because they got too close to something. But other than that, yeah, they're fine. I don't, a cream, cream lived to a a ripe old age and was an awesome super spy. So don't worry about her. Um, (laughs) Let's see. Uh, is this right? You have Runa asked a lot of questions. Um, yes, uh, the events of Shadow the Hedgehog still happened. Um, I would not bring Eclipse into the story just because uh, he's not really relevant. And also, I don't think that... No, that would not have happened because um, the massacre in this world happened before Sonic Colors. Sonic Colors never happened. Um, so Wisps never happened. So Eclipse never happened, basically. Let's see. Uh, from Blade the Eternal, how's the Gold Ring doing? Uh, Gold Ring's doing fine. Uh, I think while Mr. Cat was busy, he probably just temporarily closed it. Um, it's a very small restaurant, and like he owns the the building so like he can just do that um yeah man he owns property in san francisco they're so rich they're all rich um uh, from blade the eternal again will silver ever get the ability to travel in time no not really um that is not essential to this version of silver's premise because the events that led to him being seen as a time traveler in 06 never happened and what happened to Tikal? Well, she gets a nice happy ending with some. Yes, thank you to Ifgun for that. And boop. Uh, we kind of covered shipping already um, with um, everybody. Uh, Sonic and Shadow and Tikal and, uh, are all kind of together and Rouge is cheering on the side. Um, oh, she's she's big into the polyamorous Yeah, stuff, she's so sure. into this. Um <laughs> And uh, Silver and Blaze restart their their young romance on better footing than the first time they tried it. Um, yeah, so most most uh, Scourge Scourge and Fiona get back together. Scourge and Antique never liked each other that way. Um, so, oh yes, yeah. uh, Scourge and uh, Antique that they're back, but so is Fiona. I yeah. forgot about that. But yeah, Fiona's alive now. Yay! What is she, is she alive or a ghost? She's alive. Um, she's alive. So, yeah. so Fiona in Mobius with an E, she's alive. Yeah, they'll have to grapple with the whole she's going to age and die thing, but um, they'll they'll figure it out. I'm sure Scourge will do something morally ambiguous to fix that. Um. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um. Like turn her into a vampire or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's just just Betty with a squirt bottle. Like, no, no more evil. <laughs> okay. Um what do we want to talk about next? We have creative process, inspirations. We did that. Uh possible characters. Oh, Okita, what sounds good to you? Uh but uh, we're in the world building section, are we? Uh, 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 we've, I think we passed the world building, um, and we did shipping very quickly, and then we it's creative process, inspirations, okay. um, or possible characters. Well, creative process, I think we kind of covered a lot of that. Did, mm-hmm. uh, did oh no, hang on, this one. Did you have problems with the plot before Okita came in as a co-writer? Yes, yes, that is why he joined. <laughs> I have sort of yeah. acted as a sort of anchor on some of the st- storylines that kind of would have meandered everywhere. Yes. Uh, the basic, basically, my role is to stand behind Evan with the club. Yeah. I go, so, no, so keep on like, track. That doesn't make sense, stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> um, yes, which I very much appreciate because this is, it's like, 
in a story like this where it's like there's no real limits to what can happen, it's very easy to get derailed. But yeah, thank you to Malefe Semkalo for asking that. Also, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry for names. I am I didn't get much sleep last night, and uh, I'm not good at reading out loud in the first place. <laughs> Let's see. Well, you've been, you've been talking for over two hours. Yeah. You're probably a bit tired by yeah. now. We're almost done. We're almost there. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, uh, what, would, what would you have done differently? What? I think one of the main things I would have done differently is I feel like the first four issues, like four to six issues could be way, way tighter and stronger. Um, I've written a redo of like the be like the way that the characters meet and how the in the inciting incidents happen. Um, that is just it could have been what much faster, tighter, more impactful. Um, from the get-go, I think one of the things I would do if I was running it now, I would stick closer to Silver's like official characterization. And not lean so much on him being a uh, kind of hapless kid. Um, uh, make him more capable and proactive, and uh, lean more into his recklessness than his than making him timid, because that's really not reflective of of who he's he's supposed to be. And I don't think that um, the setting he grew up in would change it all that much in retrospect. Um, I probably wouldn't do all the stuff with the new Chaotix, or I would do it very differently, um, just because the parents uh, don't add that much to the story, and they just, they just kind of make things messier for no real reason. So um, I would probably cut them or find a way to... M better define their roles in how they uh, interact with the main group of heroes. Um, other than that, uh, those are the big ones. Those would make a big impact on kind of where the story goes. And just, uh, there, there's also things like the most of the Mobius arc was oh, just winging it like just writing a couple pages ahead the whole time, which is not ideal and led to it being way longer in some places than it should have been. So it would be very easy to go back in and tighten that kind of stuff up. Let's see. Yeah. I hope that someday we can, we can kind of do a version 2.0 um, that is probably shorter and tighter and hits harder. Probably not as a comic, though, because that would be hard. Let's see. Fan fiction. Fan fiction. Uh... And Kiwi R, I think we already talked about this, but Kiwi R asked if I'm going to keep doing Ghosts of the Future things when I can. Yes, absolutely. I love these guys, um, and I don't, I don't want to be rid of them. I want to keep them as part of my my creative stuff. Um, uh, let's see. Question from Turquoise Tangle, written in Late Speak. Um, let's see. Looking so far, how would you say that the fan comic helped you in terms of story writing, art style, and world building? What would you say would be the leading inspirations for the fan comic? Um, well, this was the first major story that I ever really got my teeth into. Um, so it was a great place to just learn how to write and format and plan uh, in general and a very safe environment to do that in uh, in terms of inspirations uh, one of the biggest ones is uh, a book by Owen Colfer um, called The Wishlist that's kind of like that's where I got the basic kind of drive of the plot and theming from um, it's a good time it is kind of there's some things that didn't age awesome but so if you read it go in with care um but other than that it's good um and then a lot of it is just drawing from the world around me um 
like growing up where I did and who I was, I put a ton of myself into the comic and a lot of the problems that the characters face are things that I was figuring out on my own at the same time. So that's where a huge part of that comes from. Yeah. And then just like other Sonic things. <laughs> a lot of it is just uh, riffing off of what was happening in the games and comics at the time. Let's see. Let's see. Question from 2x34Kyle. Um, how do you balance out ideas for Ghost Feature versus the official comics? Uh, do they overlap? Uh, honestly, not that much. Um, they it's, Ghost of Feature is such a weird AU that is so far divorced from regular Sonic that things that I come up with for those versions of the characters and the scenario they're in are simply usually just not possible in regular Sonic. So I don't have to worry about that much. Let's see. From Final Brass Break, how's it feel to go from fan work to uh, official stuff on comics and consulting for Sega and et cetera, et cetera? Um, it's happened over such a long period of time that it, kind of feels like one continuous thing <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, I personally prefer doing fan work to official work. Um, it's just more fun and more freeing. Um, Someone just did this for us. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Hold on, let me pull that up for everybody. Can you, oh, I bet you can't see that because of Discord, but there. Beautiful. That's how it works. I write I write down things and then he, he hits me over the head with a baseball bat and deletes half of it. And it's great. This is why so much ends up on the costume floor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. But it's a we have a a good kind of system. Like the way we do it is usually um you you don't hold back on feedback, but also I do kind of have veto power. If like, I really like, I really want to do this. I'll be like, please, please, sir. We must. Very much like Oliver Twist at that point. Please, <laughs> sir. Hey, have some more. Oh, God, it's it's, it's just me. <laughs> it's featured begging for more versions of Sonic. <laughs> How many, like we, we had like two ghost Sonics, have... one in a robot. We had a, uh, Two SEC Sonic, and then we had Scourge, who was also technically a Sonic. Let's see, there's SEC, Ghost of Future, Shard, uh, SEC, Shard, uh, uh, Super Sonic, and Scourge, five. Too many. Too many Sonics. <laughs> Oops, all Sonics. We There have been scenes that is exclusively Sonics. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, question from Gala Howl. Do the pencils still exist? Yes, for every page that was penciled, which is not all of them, I do still have everything in a big box. Um, they are very old. Let's see. Ah, ch -ch -ch -ch. We kind of, uh, Maliachi S underscore Jedi, um, asked about, um, Dio de Muertos, uh, stuff and, uh, especially about music. Music is kind of, uh, especially like, kind of like traditional Mexican music is kind of a blind spot for me. It's not something I've done a lot of research on into, so I really do don't have a good answer for that unfortunately i'm sorry um an overall theme song for the comic um i have a few in mind i would go with um probably uh the i'm not gonna pull it up right now but uh pentatonix's cover of uh who's gonna save the world i think it's called but I have a playlist on YouTube. I will when I link the uh, VOD of this, you can find the playlist. Um, let's see. Uh, from Greener Bird, Greener Bird, um, do you have a favorite issue? Yes, that would be sixteen, the Dia de los Muertos uh, issue. I just think that that one uh, 
it really just stands alone very nicely as a character piece um and is one of the more uh tight and self-contained stories so it's just really fun to just read that on its own and it was just a lot of fun to make so yeah Let's see. Something to be said for slice of life in a ghost house. Yeah, it, it they needed a break, for sure. Um, let's see. From you know, there's something to be said for like a just a, an easy slice of life living with ghosts in a house comic. Yeah. Yeah, I love that stuff. More, please. <laughs> okay, from the Jupiter. Um, Let's see if we if there was a dub, um, which official Sonic voice do I see for uh, Ghost Future Sonic? Uh, he's a Jason Griffith. That's the that's the time period that this comic comes from, and that's the that's generally the voice that was in my head when writing. Um, uh, from Artbox Artist, um. This is a lot, but I highlighted the, the pr relevant part, and it's how old was I when I started, and what sparked the idea. Um, we already covered uh, initial inspiration, but I was 14, I think, when I started. Same age as Silver. Um, yeah. I'm now 30. <laughs> 31. Oh, no. I've spent I've spent most of my life doing this. And now you are free. I'm free. Let's see. From Devin the Hedgehog. Yes, Devin the Hedgehog. Yes, there will be an archive. Um we will be doing that. And everybody is gonna be mostly okay, except if you're shard. Um He's dead. He's well not dead. <laughs> Let's see. This is a question from Final Shockdown and also the fake hedgehog around here. Um, kind of asking how I feel about my art over the course of the comic. I am very happy and proud of how my art changed and grew over time. And it's one of my favorite parts of the comic that you can see that happening. I am not embarrassed by my old art. Um, I think it's really great to be able to see that happening just day by day how that changes and it's also like every page i was doing my best and that was my best at the time yeah um let's see spirit of uh rain bursts uh asks why i decided to make control uh, Nicole of all characters, the antagonist. At the time, it was kind of uh, I didn't think about it that hard. It was an act of convenience. I knew I wanted. I had actually come up with uh, an original character who was going to um, play the role of kind of like a malevolent gun agent um, who was going to be doing what Nicole did at the be when we first met her, but. Um, uh, I just learned that there was, and the the character I made, his name was Nikolai the Lynx, and <laughs> I didn't know Nicole the Lynx existed. I only knew Nicole from Set AM. Um, it was a complete coincidence. Yeah, I swear. yeah, it was. And then I I started reading the Archie comics, like, oh, there's a, a Nicole here who's a Lynx. That's basically what I'm going to do. I'll just take her. And from there, it extrapolated of like, okay, she's an AI. How does that affect her, why she's here in this role? And it kind of spooled out from there. But yeah, that's also why I think it's very important to have Nicole turn good at the end where it's like, okay, now we get real Nicole. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, from Bravo F Bravo Alpha again. Um, is there any chance the comic will return? Um, I can't say when it will happen, but we do want to complete the story probably in prose um, with some illustrations. So, because that's a lot faster to make. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and like, look, we got the whole outline now. It's easy. Just fill in the blanks. <laughs> so probably sooner rather than later, we will get started on that. But I don't want to put a date on it. 
Yeah, don't quote us on anything. Yeah. Let's see. Uh... <sighs> From Spirit of Rainburst again. Um, uh, what inspired you to create G- GTF and how did it help you get a job? It helped me get a job insofar as... Um, just having a comic like being able to point like look i've been making a comic this whole time um i know how to handle these characters i know how to draw them um was a huge uh asset in my favor of just as a a very young completely new artist being for the editor at the time being able to hire me without um too much trepidation uh and it was also just a great place to practice um which is that that's its greatest skill is that it's just been a testing ground for anything I want to try. Let's see. Um, any tips for fans who want to get in this uh, into a similar position? Um, the main tip I have is just don't ask for permission to start. Just start whatever you want to make, start making it. And, um, and, and do it because you want to do it, not because yes. you expect a job at the end. Exactly. I did not start Ghost of Future with the intention of getting hired at Sega. Um, absolutely not. That would be insane. Um, that was uh, just lucky. Yeah, that was that was just a side bonus. Um, I would have done the comic anyway. <laughs> uh, probably would have been able to finish the comic too. <laughs> <laughs> the irony. <laughs> um. Yeah, let's you hear see. that? It's Sega's fault, everyone. Yeah, it's, it's Sega's, Sega's fault. Go <laughs> yell at them. Don't please don't do that. Do not do that. No, um, no, no. We're we're at, we're just joking, people. Don't actually do that because there'll, <laughs> there'll be that one guy in a thousand who <laughs> like I'm gonna go yell at Katie specifically on Twitter. Um, let's see. Uh, from Dale the Chameleon, less of a question. What? Oh, what inspired? I I mentioned before. Um. I've already really liked ghosts and stuff and uh, I was getting seriously into Sonic and Sonic fanfic in general and my favorite book at the time was The Wishlist and those things just kind of all came together in my head for like uh, if I I wanted to because it the way it worked is like I knew I wanted to tell a story about Silver because he was my favorite character from 06 and in general and uh, it just kind of spiraled out from there because like you can't use the premise of 06 because it erases itself so how do you get to Silver and how do you get the other characters you want into this this setting um, logically and it just kind of each step builds on the next I think most likely it's just the uh, the Omni Man meme of that's the neat thing, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. <sighs> that one. And then Holly Adams asked the same a similar question about how to come up with it, um, and the inspiration, and all of all just everything kind of built on it itself with like asking yourself if then questions. If you want this, then how do you get there? kind of things and if you have one core concept you really want to do it's very easy to like plant that flag in the in the ground and just move out from there kind of working backwards to get to where you want to be um from cozy um how did i come up with the designs most of the designs are um kind of just ex- extrapolating from the situation the characters find themselves in and the setting, the rules of the setting to make it feel distinct from regular Sonic. Um, that's all my throat can handle right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. We already talked about family members. So we're good on that. Thank you to the fake hedgehog around here. Um, let's see. What is this one? How did I manage to stick with the comic for so long? Also from Fake Hedgehog. Um, I'm too stupid to quit, I guess. I mean, the real answer is that it's fun. It was fun to keep telling the story and coming up with what comes next. And uh, I also kept poking you. Yes, you you definitely helped. And also just like there was more to try and more to do. Um, And 
making the comic was a major uh, outlet for stress for a lot of my for a lot of my life, um, and a refuge from other things going on around me that I really needed. Yeah, so that's why it was I was able to stick through it. It's also um, since it is a fan project that is a big influence on keeping up enthusiasm. I had official comics and games and shows and music and things that all uh, help support the interest. Let's see. Let's see. Um, we already talked about designs. Um, Possible future characters now, yes? Yeah, let's do that. I think that's the, fi the final section. I think it is. Let's check. Yes, we're almost there. We're so we can be strong. You can do okay. it. Okay, from X... Uh, let's see. X... Xtheniox, I guess? Um, let's see. What were any future characters that have yet to be included going to look like? Um, well, in the outline, I think we kind of went over that as it would be mostly just alt forms. There's the second devourer, but there's also like a uh, super ghost of future Sonic. Um, there would be probably hyper forms for all of the, the hedgehog boys. Um, there would be supersonic uh, SDC supersonic. Um, there would be like uh, the metal overlord with Zachary. Um, Robotnik's mech. Uh, metal T. Call. Was that it? The good Nicole. Um. <laughs> I think that's about it. I'm probably... Oh, and Shadow. Shadow getting another makeover. Because um, he's, he's blind and burned. Yes, he, he loves it. Um, he's fine. <laughs> I feel like that's what... I either say he's fine or he loves it to any question anything like that um let's see he's not an immense amount of pain yeah let's see uh that and then from the story hollow and mabso girl um they're asking would there be any cameos or other kind of characters beyond because that's just like alt forms for the most part or characters we know are coming um I think the only thing is like in the cameo palooza section of the second of hours dimension, we might have cameos of like Archie characters or IDW characters like to be like, Oh shit, their dimensions got consumed too. That's not good. Um, kind of stuff to really kind of pump the stakes a little bit. Um, let's see. But it's like, but like none of them would be particularly story relevant. It would just be like neat background stuff. Um, from Sanic Details, um, uh, they want to know if Tails would be back. Probably only in the cameo section because again we cut the whole um, Tails ghost stuff. Yeah. Plus there was yeah. that thing a long time ago when it was connected with the Tales Away comic. Yeah, that was a, a comic I briefly continued, um, but I I burnt out on that very quickly and uh, it's like an overwhelming like making this into a true multiverse story would have been absolutely exhausting. And it just it would have made it like an, a, an eternal story, like there's no ending. And I'm like I can't do that. I think that's why I, I put the kibosh on is like, I need to get this comic into a, a finished state. Let's see. And Kai, Kai Tzu, uh creates a similar question about Sally and company. Um, yeah, no, no significant plans for them. Um, there are some weird world building things about how theoretically Sally and company could have existed in this version of Sonic's world that are, in a nebulous state of canonicity for Ghost of the Future. Um, you can look it up on my Tumblr if you want to know the weird stuff. Um, Real Naki Weasel asks if there are any plans for a new Team Hooligan to go along with Team Chaotix. Um, probably not a new one, but like 
Knack? No, Fang, sorry. Um, Fang would still have been around um, after the massacre and stuff. So probably the new Chaotix were still tangling with him um, from time to time. Yeah. But no, like, there, I don't see a reason for them to be, like, a formal organization. Let's see. From Yui Haruna, um, would Sonic Boom or Sonic Underground have been featured? Uh, probably only as cameos. Let's see. Also, from Haruna, um... Uh <laughs> the, the Sonic Underground dimension got eaten by the second devourer. That's why there was <laughs> never was, any more that, episodes. That was, that was the first one to go. Um, let's see. Would Gold or Professor Von Schlemmer have appeared? I think I did briefly toy with that idea of actually crossing over with the Silver Age more formally, but it never, like, a plot never really came out of it, so it didn't go anywhere. Yeah, I don't feel it's... Ne I mean, it's technically already a crossover, but um, I don't feel it needs to be more of one than that. Let's see. Um, uh, Malachi as Jedi is asking, um, would I bring any uh, IDW characters in? And Leafgun29 is asking the same thing, more or less. Um, if this comic had, like, through some sort of hypothetical time warp uh, was starting when IDW was um, was also running. Almost definitely I would have been doing some of that if I was like 14 years old and reading IDW Sonic when it first came out. I probably would have stuck Tangle and Whisper in here. Um, but uh, as it is, I again it goes back to I don't the same reason I don't think that we need Sisley or Venny and IDWs because uh the same way around we don't need Tangle or Whisper or any anybody like that in uh because feature because their their bases are already covered. Yeah. Let's see. Um I think that's it. Yeah, Crystal Frost if there're more characters from before Silver's time. Uh not really. No, it's like we're almost like the comic kind of ground to a halt almost before it dove into the final end game. So we kind of had our whole cast already. But yeah, I think that's it. Um, any last questions from the chat before we we call it for the day? Yes, Evan did indeed cancel Sonic Underground. I did it. It was me. I went back it in time. I was I was you sent years, the second I was I was two years old and I did it. You sent the second devourer to eat their universe. Is Sonic still a oh, ghost no. at the end? Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. And that's a bonus. Yep. Because being a ghost is the most. <laughs> on toast. They got any more? If there was a if there was a moment in the comic you'd want to remove, what would it be? Uh, moment I'd like to remove. Um, that's a good question. Uh, there are some things like we mentioned with like f dropped plot lines with like the Blaze thing. Um, I think I would take Elise out of the the. Secret Rings arc. She really doesn't need to be there. Um, things that... I'm absolutely sure there are many things I would like to omit if I could, but I am blanking on what they are. <laughs> uh, does Shadow age now, now that he's had his nanites burnt out? Yep, yep. He would age now. Um, he could theoretically be re-saturated with nanites like Nicole could be like hey I got some spares I think he would probably refuse that um because I don't think it's ever really something he's wanted and it's kind of like in doing this he's no longer the ultimate it, life form? He, he's kind of freed from that that title and that responsibility it's very much a Wolverine thing isn't it yeah man anything else uh are people, uh, are people allowed to use characters from Ghost of the Future 
in their fan works or no. Yes, yes, you can. I would like uh, credit probably for both of us. Um, but uh, yeah, you can use you can use them. I, for the most part, Ghost Feature is a nonprofit open source. You can use it um, as long as you're not selling it or taking credit for it. I mean, I, I certainly have my plans for a few little bits of uh, the story and lore that we've worked on here. And yeah. To, to come up in my comic. Yeah, story. your comic kind of uh, turns, it, it's a bit of a spin-off in that way. Yes, especially since uh, King Tabor, you know, he helps the the Ghost of the Future crowd defeat the Second Devourer, and then he gets to go back to, um, to his world yeah. with a robotic body that's been made for him by the Nicole of this universe. Yeah, him and him and Nicole will be working together to get him home better. <laughs> they can bring him back better than they found him. <laughs> yep, they they become AI bros. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, while Koba asked what Fenny would color would Fenny turn is super, probably turquoise. She'd be she'd be horrible to print in CMYK mode, just the worst. Let's see. Uh, Sedge asks if Sonk and Shadow are queer platonic, and yes, yes they are. They and Polly. And Rouge is, Rouge is just, she's into that shit. <laughs> Rouge is here too, and she loves it. Um. Although the only annoyed thing I think she'd be is like, I missed all of that character development. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that's also a reason that Shadow would not want to um, regain his immortality is that now that Rouge is back and he's no longer immortal, they could actually age together. Oh yeah, Omega's there too. <laughs> Omega's, Omega's there. Just, yeah. It's, uh, did we have a set? Did, did we have a set? Did we have a set path, or did we make it up as we went along? Uh, Bit of both. Yeah, uh, which is pretty normal for most long stories. Is like you kind of have goalposts you're aiming for, but you don't know exactly how you're going to get there. You duck and weave a lot. Yeah, and like with the the, the finale, like we had kind of like a choose your own adventure branching path of options and we just decided to barrel down the middle basically um because it was the one that actually led from a to to b the best okay anything else because uh we'll have been <laughs> at this for nearly three hours now, yeah so. i think we're good yeah so yeah. last call for questions before some of us need to go to bed yeah so, come on. Possible cute ship artish? Uh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say yeah, probably. Um, commission me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do it for you. Hand over the money. Give me the money. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, and especially if like we get this written up, like there will be illustrations and that'll be in there. Unrelated, do you think Batman's ever going to get over the death of his parents? Well, that's no. it for today, folks. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely it for today, folks. But uh, to answer that question, no. Because at that point, he stops being a character that DC can milk. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, everybody, so much. This was really fun. And I'm really glad that the, the ending was uh, felt good for folks. At least I hope yep. it did. Yeah, this is going to get archived for people, so if they yep. want to go back and have a listen. And uh, stay tuned, uh, or at least hang on to news from us, because there may be some Ghost of the Future stuff at some point in the future. We don't quote us on when. Yes, and this, it, this also, team... if you happen to be signed up for the Patreon, and if you're like, okay, Ghost of the Future is done, peace out, do it. Absolutely. More power to you. I'm probably going to be using that my patreon more for my original projects in the upcoming in the foreseeable future so yeah yep and no just to answer there. that 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 quick question i saw there does team dark retire at the end yes they do mm -hmm. they get their own their own house shadows blind and you know omega and Rouge are taking care of it Rouge will probably help the the kids run uh <laughs> every all the adults are gonna be helping the kids run the new chaotix <laughs> because i mean it's her organization so 
right. Well, yeah. well, we really need to go now because it's getting yeah. pretty late. So yeah. I will see you guys another time. Okay. All right. Ta-ta, everybody. Bye-bye.